Part One of Who Burnt Columbia? This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by David Wales. Who Burnt Columbia? By Augustine T. Smith. Part One Depositions for Claimants. Who Burnt Columbia? Extracts from Depositions for Claimants extract from the case of j j brown v united states deposition of william d stanley eighth were you in columbia on the night of the burning answer yes sir ninth by what means was the city burned answer by general sherman's army of the united states troops i saw a man with the uniform of a united states soldier on enter the store of mr robert bryce on the block immediately opposite where mr brown kept his store and with a firebrand about four feet in length wrapped on one end with canvas put fire to the store of mr bryce under the roof all the buildings in that neighbourhood were destroyed on both sides of the street previous to the general conflagration i saw a number of soldiers pass me with tin cans and balls of cotton tied up with cord in an hour or two the city was in flames a United States soldier told me himself that he set fire to Colonel Clarkson's house. The United States soldiers were then all over the city. They appeared to have selected the northwest corner of every square on Main Street in the city, and fire broke out simultaneously from different portions of the city. The wind blew strong from the northwest at the time. Houses standing in detached grounds of from three to forty acres were burned at the same time. There were no other soldiers in the city at the time except the United States soldiers under General Sherman. A United States officer who was a perfect gentleman, who was sick in my store, told me that the city of Columbia would be burned that night, which was the night of the 17th of February, 1865, and also explained to me the signals which would be used i then sent for the mayor of the city and informed him of the fact while standing in front of my place of business general sherman with a portion of his staff was passing and the mayor stopped them and told him that he had heard that the town would be burned that night general sherman replied mr mayor you can go home and make yourself perfectly easy your city and citizens are just as safe as if there was not a federal soldier within a thousand miles they shall be protected if it takes an entire corps of my army i will avail myself of some day when the wind is not so high to destroy the confederate property he then rode on on that night notwithstanding this assertion i looked out for the signals of which i had been informed by the sick officer and saw them immediately after the signals the fire commenced at the northwest corner of every square on the main street before this the cotton had been set on fire in the middle of the street but put out by the fire department about three o'clock on the morning of the eighteenth general sherman ordered his fire brigade to proceed to stop the fire and prevent its further extension very soon thereafter the fire stopped w b stanley sworn to and subscribed before me this the seventh day of february eighteen seventy two albert m boozer u s commissioner circuit and district courts for district of south carolina milo h barry being duly sworn deposed i was in columbia in february eighteen sixty five when the city was burned the first fire i saw which was close to me was set on fire by soldiers i did not see the petitioner's store burned but suppose it was burned in the general conflagration the place i saw set on fire was set on fire by soldiers wearing the uniform of united states soldiers this was on the seventeenth february eighteen sixty five on the morning of the seventeenth of february when the army of general sherman entered i came into the city when i found that a committee of citizens had gone to surrender the city to general sherman this was about eight a m directly after about ten or eleven o'clock a m the army entered after the army came in about twelve o'clock i came down street to the old market on the main street 
there was cotton out in the street near the courthouse the wind commenced blowing a lively breeze and the cotton took fire the soldiers ran for the fire engines when i met one of the firemen and told him to open the engine house and told him to run out the hose carriage that they did not need an engine the citizens and soldiers ran out the hose carriage and put the fire out i did not see any more fire until about nine or ten o'clock that night and this was the warehouse before mentioned according to my best of belief i presume there were one hundred bales in the street the cotton was strewn along the centre of the main street for a considerable distance the cotton was in bales the wind kept freshening up all the afternoon my observation in regard to cotton burning is that it burns like a live coal it does not blaze when packed the last time i saw the pile of cotton mentioned was about twelve p m of the seventeenth i think there were other piles of cotton in the street but i am not certain in regard thereto nor can i tell whether or not other cotton was burned except the first above mentioned about five o'clock of the morning of the eighteenth or before a guard was sent to me i had however procured a guard before i cannot say whether or not general sherman's army or any portion thereof acted as an organized body in an effort to subdue the flames general hampton's troops left in the morning previous to the burning they left fully four hours before i saw the cotton burning as before stated m h barry william glaze being duly sworn deposed i witnessed the burning of columbia i know that the city was destroyed by general sherman's army because they were in the city at the time and i saw persons in the uniform of united states soldiers setting fire to the city in various places i saw two such persons fire mr phillips auction warehouse they opened the door and threw balls which they had set on fire into the building and in less than twenty minutes the building was in flames this building was diagonally across from the petitioner's store it occurred about seven o'clock p m all that part of the city caught directly after that in about one half of an hour i saw several other houses fired and among them my own building i am speaking now of what i saw myself i saw a building back of the old city hotel fired by balls by persons wearing similar uniforms whom i know to be united states soldiers for they came into my own house they burned my machine shop there were about one hundred soldiers there at the time they broke up the machinery and then set fire there too not however by balls as aforesaid but by the broken boxes etc and oil poured on in the course of half an hour the conflagration became general most of the burning was done from that time until about three o'clock next morning i was a member of the city council at the time and went with the mayor to general sherman when general sherman promised the mayor that there would be no burning that night i saw no efforts on the part of the united states soldiers to subdue the fire but on the other hand i saw them endeavoring to spread it and heard some of them remark that it was not half enough it was on my way home from our conference with general sherman that i saw mr phillips warehouse fired i saw a sky rocket sent up from the state house yard where the headquarters of general sherman were which i took to be the signal for the burning of the city for immediately thereafter the fire burst out all over the city soldiers had been stationed at different points in the meantime william glaze sworn to and subscribed before me this eighteenth day of march a d eighteen seventy two albert m boozer u s commissioner for district of south carolina john mackenzie being duly sworn deposed i witnessed the burning of columbia on the main or richardson street my own residence was burned it must have been burned by bands of persons and not by accident i was a great part of the time about the fire on that night between nine and ten o'clock that night night of the seventeenth february i observed fires on the western side and eastern side of richardson street toward the state house about that time i saw fires out of the city apparently three or four or perhaps six or eight miles distant and in the suburbs 
soon the fires became general there were fires in the different parts of the city we left the main street and went on the back street to brennan and castle's carriage factory thinking we could there prevent the fire from proceeding on in the back of the city but there i gave it up as the hands left i saw soldiers during the time rushing about in and out of the stores i noticed that after they came out several times fires would soon break out from the stores entered but i did not see any of them put fire to any building nor did i see them carrying torches they did not aid me at night in stopping the fire i have been for many years president of a fire company i have been connected with the fire department for thirty years from my experience therein i judge that the fire was the work of incendiaries and not of accident i explain this in this way the fires occurred in twenty or thirty different places at the same time and so far from each other that they could not have been connected united states troops told me in my store in the morning that i would see hell to-night that they wouldn't leave one store upon another the parties who made the remarks were united states troops and belonged to general sherman's army john mackenzie sworn to etc etc extracted from depositions in the case of wood and hayworth versus the united states charleston office of u s commissioner april seventeenth eighteen seventy two reply to interrogation alfred huger sworn eighty-four years of age resides in charleston i was postmaster in charleston before the war and i had held the office for thirty years i was in columbia in february eighteen sixty five i was there when the federal troops entered the town i had conversations with several officers and with one who was called captain i don't remember his name i had a good deal of conversation with him and a day or two after the fire this captain said in answer to my question as to who had fired columbia we did it his saying so only confirmed my own impression if he had said anything else it would not have shaken my belief and impression and previously to the fire the general impression in the town was that columbia was to be burned nobody was surprised when the fire broke out and in consequence of this general impression i had taken what precautions i could to secure my family i had conversation at several times with two private soldiers named goodman and elliot they stated that the fire had been done by the army alfred huger sworn to before me on the seventeenth of april eighteen seventy two john f porteous u s commissioner w b williams sworn the officers of general sherman's army told me that all cotton would be burned and all public buildings destroyed this is all i know of general sherman's ordering the cotton to be burned the shed under which the cotton was stored was private property general sherman's army took possession of columbia at about eleven o'clock a m at the time he came in the city was under its civil officers and was surrendered to him by them the confederate forces had left the city that same morning and had held military possession until they left my impression is that general beauregard was in command general wade hampton held a position as one of the commanding officers there was a good deal of cotton piled in the streets of the city prior to its occupation by the federal forces with the intention that it should be burned and an order was issued to that effect but none was burned before the coming in of the federal troops and the order was not obeyed and a portion of the cotton was not burned until the last day of the occupation by the federal troops a portion was piled in main or richardson street in the neighborhood of the old court house at this place there was about two hundred bales the rest of the cotton was piled in different parts of the town principally in and about the portion of town called cotton town w b williams sworn to before me this fifteenth april eighteen seventy two jonathan f porteous u s commissioner to int first orlando z bates aged fifty eight years columbia south carolina merchant to int third the city was in the possession of general sherman's army after ten or eleven a m on that day 
general sherman was in command of that army i saw him on that day as he entered the city and passed along the main street at the head of the main body of the army i was at that time one of the aldermen of the city of columbia and on the morning of the seventeenth february a d eighteen sixty five was informed that the board of aldermen would meet at six o'clock a m attended and was informed by the mayor of the city that the city was about to be evacuated by the confederate troops and that it would be surrendered to the army of general sherman in company with the mayor hon t j goodwin and alderman mackenzie and stork i proceeded to the outskirts of the city and met the advance guard of the federal army under command of colonel stone to whom the mayor tendered the surrender of the city informing colonel stone that there were no troops of the confederate army in the city and that the population was chiefly old men and women and children colonel stone accepted the surrender and deponent and the persons already named accompanied by colonel stone returned into the city about twelve or one o'clock when i observed a number of scattered federal soldiers already in the city there was no alarm of fire and no burning of any description previous to the occupation already stated the conflagration commenced after the entry of the united states forces to int four a large portion of the city was destroyed by fire during the day and night of the seventeenth february eighteen sixty five and on the following day i was in the city and was at various points in that portion which was destroyed at the time of the burning and saw the burning as it progressed i saw the burning of several houses in the portion of the city lying between main street and the gas works at about twilight on the seventeenth a little later the store on main street occupied by an aid association as a depot of supplies for confederate hospitals near the corner of plain street was set on fire i was present with the fire company aiding to extinguish it and saw federal soldiers sticking bayonets into the engine hose and cutting the same with hatchets and knives the hose and carriage was finally demolished and the engine rendered unserviceable by the soldiers these fires preceded the general conflagration i will also state that a quantity of cotton had been brought out of the cellars of stores where it had been kept on the east side of main street between washington and main streets and piled in the middle of the street as the troops passed it i saw the cotton fired by them striking matches and applying the cotton thus fired was kept from spreading by mr mackenzie the captain of the independent fire company having a hose attached to the hydrant at that point and keeping a stream constantly playing upon it this was during the afternoon of the seventeenth february at about eight or nine o'clock p m on the seventeenth february i saw several rockets ascend from some point near the state house shortly after this my store which was on main street a few doors south of the market was set on fire and immediately after this i saw fires arising in various parts of the city and in very short time nearly the whole of richardson or main street was in flames i saw several instances of federal soldiers actually applying fire to buildings and others carrying torches in various parts of the city for the same purpose i conversed freely with the soldiers of general sherman's army both at the time of the burning and afterwards and no one ever denied the act but several expressed regret that the entire city was not destroyed i saw numbers of them at the scenes of the burning giving expressions and demonstrations of satisfaction by dancing and otherwise to ent five every house from one square south of the state house to upper boundary street or main street which includes all the business houses were burnt up excepting one small house in the extreme northern portion of main street all the storehouses containing cotton were burned and my observation was that every bale of cotton in columbia at that time was burned the large warehouses in the northern portion of main street which were principally stored with cotton were all burned cross-examined by james a dunbar esq counsel for the united states i was an alderman of this city at the time of its surrender previous to the surrender the confederate forces had occupied this city 
they evacuated the city on the morning of the seventeenth february a d eighteen sixty five i have no means of knowing who was in command of the confederate forces in the city generals beauregard joseph e johnston and wade hampton and general law were here about that time i saw them some days before the seventeenth but not on that day i saw infantry and cavalry of the confederate forces leave the city on the morning of its occupation by the federal forces the cavalry which was called wheelers left in the direction of winsboro at about nine o'clock a m and the infantry at an earlier hour on the seventeenth prior to the leaving of the confederate forces cotton was piled up and stored on the back streets of columbia one lot was piled in richardson street between lady and washington streets about one hundred yards south of the courthouse there were about ten bales thus piled this was the only cotton which i know to have been piled on richardson street the bales were ragged and in bad order this cotton was not fired or attempted to be fired according to my knowledge prior to the evacuation by the confederate forces and was not burning until after the troops of general sherman took possession of the city on the afternoon of the seventeenth i first saw it burning about three o'clock of that day it was not entirely consumed at that time it was extinguished first by the independent fire engine company and then the hose was attached to the hydrant and ordered to be played on until the fire was entirely put out no united states soldiers assisted in putting out this fire as far as i know of no cotton was piled on richardson street between washington and plain streets nor between lady street and the state house these ten bales or about that number was all the cotton which i saw piled on richardson street at the time i returned into the city after surrendering the city to colonel stone there was a strong breeze blowing from a westerly direction when the wind did not carry the fire i saw the united states soldiers carry the fire by torches and apply it to the buildings which were not then burning i am unable to state of my own knowledge who started the fire in the first instance i do not know of my own knowledge that general sherman or any subordinate officer issued an order or orders that the city should be burned i never heard general sherman say to mayor goodwin that private property should not be burned on sunday morning the nineteenth of february eighteen sixty five i knew the united states soldiers to assist in extinguishing the fire at the residence of adam edgar on lady street and in that neighbourhood and their efforts prevented the spread of the fire on that occasion i do not know that wood's division of sherman's army were employed in the effort to extinguish the flames of the general conflagration on the morning of the eighteenth of february at the time of which i have testified i was not in the confederate service cross-examined by william r bachman esq counsel for plaintiffs i do not know of any order being issued by general sherman that any buildings in columbia should not be burned but i saw an order signed by a colonel williams or some officer posted in the building known as the sword factory on washington street to the effect that that building was not to be burned i read the order myself that building was not burned but it was much damaged by the soldiers pulling off the weather boarding on the eighteenth february a little before sunset i called to see the officer of the day at his headquarters on plain street and in his absence was shown by the officer who represented him an order which forbade the firing of any house in the city either by soldier or citizen on the penalty of being shot after this time the fire occurred at adam edgar's as i have before stated and at other places these fires were extinguished by the aid of the united states soldiers i do not know of any assistance rendered by the united states soldiers in suppressing the fire on the day and night of the seventeenth of february orlando z bates at about eleven or twelve o'clock that night i saw a squad of united states soldiers enter my premises and apply fire to the outbuilding by means of some inflammable torches which they put to the buildings i put out the fire so applied twice and on the third time my residence and the neighbouring dwellings were consumed 
i saw the soldiers break in the door of the washington street methodist church immediately opposite my own residence and in a few moments after i saw the smoke and flames coming out of the doors and windows and the church was soon consumed i was in the company of two united states officers at the time of this occurrence and they with me witnessed it after leaving my own house at about one o'clock of that night i saw a party of united states soldiers break into the residence of c p pelham on the corner of washington and bull streets i went to the door and saw these soldiers in the upper part of the building and in a few minutes afterward i saw the flames break out of the upper part of the building and it was soon burned down i saw no other firing by soldiers during the night malcolm shelton extracted from depositions in the case of david jacobs versus the united states testimony of j g gibbs the city was surrendered to general sherman about ten o'clock in the morning of friday the seventeenth february by dr thomas jefferson goodwin the mayor about one mile from the limits of the town he rode out to meet the army coming in and the forces entered the city and took possession just at eleven o'clock i noticed the clock myself as the first van arrived no resistance was offered to general sherman or his army most of the confederate troops left early on friday morning the rear guard under general p b young of general hampton's command left just as the federal troops were entering no riots fire or pillage had yet occurred on the seventeenth day the first fire commenced about three hours after the first entering about ten o'clock an alarm of fire arose caused by the burning of some cotton in richardson street it was set by the united states soldiers my own impression is that the fire was accidentally caused by a cigar being thrown into the cotton the alarm of fire was started the fire engines immediately began to play on it and subdued the flames just about the time that it was extinguished the united states soldiers began to riddle and to cut up the hose with their bayonets i was present immediately at the fire which occurred just south of the market there was no disorder though the troops all seemed in a good humor and were laughing and jeering at those who had extinguished the flames but opposed no resistance except a few drunken men cut up the hose but the fire had already been extinguished question these drunken men were soldiers answer yes sir and there was some sacking but was not general that is between this fire and night i saw several instances myself my store amongst the rest was broken open by the soldiers no officer present about seven o'clock in the evening three or four rockets were thrown up in the extreme northwestern portion of the town immediately after that fire was seen in three different points in the northwestern part of the city the flames spread rapidly from each of those quarters there was a strong wind blowing from the northwestern towards the southwestern direction which caused the general conflagration there is no doubt but that the city was burned by the wind spreading the flames but whenever they came to a vacant lot and the flames would have stopped they were started on this side by the soldiers who had inflammable materials turpentine and cotton i saw various of the soldiers with bottles with some inflammable materials i supposed it to be turpentine with which they made fireballs and started the fire in buildings in that way my father's house was burned by them after having escaped the general conflagration it was a fireproof building and had escaped the flames i saw them fire the furniture in the house turn over the piano tables chairs and starting the fire from lace curtains which they lit from the gas lights there was a crowd present at my father's house who did his best to stop these proceedings but was powerless i did not see anything of the transportation of merchandise in vehicles or otherwise no restraint was put by the officers and no effort at all made until saturday morning no patrol or provost guard was to be seen suppressing the proceedings the signals sent up were those already described which were the signals for firing the town about seven o'clock in the evening question 
whether immediately thereafter fires at various parts of the business portion of the city were about simultaneously started and state such instances as you witnessed of the setting of such fires how and where used and by whom done whether any and what efforts were made by citizens to put out fires whether on the seventeenth day an assistance was rendered them and by any united states soldiers whether the hose-pipe was cut and any engine used in extinguishing the flames injured by the united states soldiers within your personal knowledge please state if you at any time knew or heard of any order by general sherman or his subordinate on the seventeenth day of february forbidding the plunder and burning of private stores buildings and property if such order was generally on said day known or promulgated or if you heard of such an order issued after the conflagration had been subdued on the eighteenth of said february answer immediately after the rockets the fire started at three different points in the northwest part of the city and extended very rapidly in a southeasterly direction it was done by soldiers of general sherman's army efforts were rapidly made by the citizens the engines were not turned out that night because the hose had been cut when they were playing on the fire of the cotton at one o'clock in that day therefore the engines were of no service but there were buckets of water and the efforts were made to extinguish the flames by individuals until there were so interfered with by the soldiers that they found it useless and abandoned all efforts question were the engines injured answer i think not only the hose question did you hear of any order etc answer i heard of no order on the contrary i have every reason to believe from information derived from some of his own soldiers that if the town was not actually destroyed by orders the men fully understood that they would have license to do as they pleased i can give my special reasons for saying that for instance a house belonging to me occupied by dr boozer now physician of the penitentiary was visited on friday evening by united states soldiers and in return for some kindness shown them by mrs boozer his wife they kindly advised her to remove and conceal everything of value that the town would be destroyed that night she came to me and carried me to her house to see these men who repeated in my presence these statements but i could not believe it and dissuaded her from any attempt to remove i could not believe such a thing possible but it turned out as they predicted question when were you appointed mayor answer the citizens had a meeting the morning after the fire and sent for me in the state house yard and begged me to take hold of the government of the city j g gibbs sworn to etc etc extract from testimony of joseph sampson the soldiers entered the town about ten or eleven o'clock a m and they began to pillage about two p m and i saw colonels and captains with these soldiers while they were pillaging and i saw no effort made by them to put a stop to these acts i remained in columbia until eighteen sixty six when i returned here to charleston no cross-examination signed joseph sampson sworn to me before this twenty ninth day of july eighteen seventy two seal jonathan f porteous u s commissioner extracts from depositions in gravelly v u s deposition of john a civil john a civil a witness for the memorialist being duly sworn deposes and says i was a resident of columbia during the occupation of the city by the forces of general sherman in february eighteen sixty five i witnessed the conflagration of said city on the night of the seventeenth of february eighteen sixty five and the days following i saw united states soldiers officers being present with them put fire to houses during that period i saw a united states officer and file of soldiers set fire to a storehouse containing cotton on the morning of the evacuation of the city by the united states troops cross-examined by mr basket at the time i saw the united states soldiers setting fire to houses the officers present were not assisting them in doing so 
i saw one officer attempting to put the fire out he was the only officer out of them all that i saw attempt to do anything to stop the fire the officers when applied to by the members of my family said they could afford no relief the first fires which i saw was about seven or eight o'clock in the evening of the seventeenth of february when the officers were applied to as stated several houses in my neighbourhood were on fire there was a little wind at the time but a strong wind prevailed later in the night john a civil deposition of roland keenan roland keenan a witness for the memorialists being sworn deposes and says i am a resident of columbia and was present at the burning of columbia on the seventeenth february eighteen sixty five i saw during that burning soldiers in the uniform of the united states setting fire to buildings in cotton town at that time there were united states officers mingling in the crowd and they made no effort to prevent the burning i saw federal soldiers set fire to the storehouse belonging to mrs law at the corner of upper and richardson streets in the city of columbia the house was filled with cotton and the buildings and cotton were completely destroyed by the fire cross-examined by mr bousket i saw a company of twelve or thirteen federal soldiers with torches in their hands setting fire to several cotton houses in the upper part of columbia and there were five or six officers in that party the streets were crowded with troops at that time i did not see the officers actually assisting in the burning nor did i see them make any efforts to prevent it or put it out cross in reply by mr walker the soldiers spoken of as setting the fire must have done so under the observation of the officers present by mr bousket could the officer have controlled the men on that occasion the witness says on the only occasion on which i saw them attempt it they controlled them with ease r a kernan deposition of ptolemy chambers ptolemy chambers a witness being duly sworn deposes and says i was a resident of columbia on the seventeenth february eighteen sixty five on that night i saw early in the evening federal soldiers commanded by an officer setting fire to houses in the upper part of the city of columbia i lived in the immediate neighbourhood and saw the cotton house of mrs law burning in the general conflagration on the night of the seventeenth february eighteen sixty five and with its contents it was entirely destroyed i know that it was filled with cotton belonging to fisher and agnew and company p p chambers deposition of charles f jackson charles f jackson a witness being duly sworn deposes and says i am a native of england i was on main street in the city of columbia on the occasion of the entry of the main army of general sherman on the seventeenth february eighteen sixty five i witnessed the seventeenth army corps march through the main street and was struck by the perfect order and equipment of the said corps at the time the advanced corps were disbanded and breaking into and plundering the stores along their line of march and though from the discipline of the said seventeenth corps it would have been easy to have prevented this pillage no attempt was made so to do on the night following i witnessed united states soldiers with balls of combustible material lighting them and flinging them about the streets and over and under the houses federal officers at the same time mingling in the crowd the conflagration of columbia i believe could have been prevented judging from the perfect discipline of the united states army when under orders as i saw it on that day subsequent to the destruction of columbia i saw a united states officer whose name i do not now remember who stated to me that the burning of columbia was premeditated and he stated to me that he had seen the plan of march as mapped out and that columbia was marked for conflagration and that it was a general understanding in the army that columbia was to be burned he further stated that any statement made by general sherman to the contrary was a lie the counsel for the united states objects to the admission of any statement made to witness c f jackson End of part one.
two of who burnt columbia by augustin t smith this librivox recording is in the public domain part two deposition of general oliver o howard part one deposition of o o howard the deposition of o o howard a witness produced sworn and examined on the part and behalf of the united states in the cause above entitled now depending before the above-named commission taken before me a united states commissioner in and for the district of columbia at washington in said district on the tenth day of december eighteen seventy two pursuant to a notice to that effect duly given by the agent and counsel for the united states mr a s worthington appeared on behalf of the united states messrs george r walker bartley denver mackay and wells on behalf of claimants the said o o howard having been first by me duly sworn to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth deposes and says my name is o o howard my age is forty-two years my residence is district of columbia i am a native of maine my position is that of a general in the united states army preliminary question propounded by the officer taking this deposition have you any interest direct or indirect in the claim which is the subject matter of the above entitled cause or of this examination if so state the nature and extent of such interest answer i have no interest being examined by mr worthington of counsel for the united states the witness further deposes and says question state what your rank in the united states army was in february eighteen sixty five answer i was major-general of volunteers at that time i think i was not a brigadier-general in the regular army until march following question what was your command in february eighteen sixty five answer i commanded the army of the tennessee constituting the right wing of general sherman's army question operating in the state of south carolina answer yes sir question please state the principal points through which your command passed in the march from savannah to goldsboro answer the principal portion of my command was transported to beaufort south carolina thence marched northward through pocatelligo orangeburg columbia chera fayetteville subordinate columns swept into different towns general slocum had the left wing he was at the north of me mine was the right line of march question during the march under what orders from general sherman were you acting in respect to private property answer they were to take such provisions as were necessary for the subsistence of the army but generally to spare private property with some few exceptions cotton was accepted i was directly instructed again and again to destroy the cotton objected to by mr walker as the orders will show for themselves they being the best testimony answer continued i will put in evidence the orders i received from general sherman and the orders i issued on the subject if it be desired question on what day did you enter the town of columbia yourself answer the seventeenth of february eighteen sixty five question please state in your own way your recollection of the circumstances attending the occupation of that city and the destruction of a portion of it answer on the fifteenth of february in the vicinity of columbia opposite thereto across the congaree we met with much resistance at congaree creek and had to push our way very slowly the enemy retiring before us when we arrived opposite columbia we found the bridge across the congaree destroyed by fire we moved up to where the two rivers the saluda and the broad conjoined to form the congaree the bridge across the saluda was destroyed by fire by the enemy we bridged that and crossed our troops the other bridge when we reached the land intervening between the two rivers was still standing but as we attempted to cross it it was set on fire by the enemy and having been covered with rosin was in flames in a moment so that even the confederate cavalry rushed northward to save themselves some of them without crossing our troops spent the whole night in getting across the broad which was a very difficult river 
we ferried over a brigade at the beginning by means of ropes and boats that brigade was the brigade of colonel stone and pushed its way up the hill slowly against the enemy retiring the enemy passed through columbia and the mayor came to the outside of the city and surrendered the city i think between ten and eleven o'clock say ten o'clock in the meantime a regular bridge was laid across the broad river and general sherman and myself crossed over riding side by side before any other troops from this leading brigade had passed it was about half past ten that general sherman and i rode over ahead of all the remaining portion of the troops that had not been ferried over and rode directly on to the city a distance of about three miles entering it in what we called the main street i believe the name as it appears on the map is richardson street it was the one which led directly to the capitol at every corner of the street we met crowds of people principally negroes not very far from the market-house we met the mayor of the city who had a short conversation with general sherman as my troops alone were to have charge of the city i observed very carefully the disposition of the guards of the leading brigade colonel stones sentinels were located in front of the buildings of any considerable importance and on the main street the principal portion of the brigade was in rest waiting for orders there was only that one brigade we were ahead of all the rest near the brigade was an immense pile of cotton bales were broken open in the middle of the streets and were on fire an engine was playing upon the fire and soldiers and citizens were engaged apparently in extinguishing it general sherman was met with much enthusiasm by a company of soldiers observing them closely i saw that some of them were under the influence of drink mr walker question were these united states soldiers answer yes sir there were apparently no others there i ordered those that were drunk under guard immediately and made every disposition necessary for the protection of property we rode together past the market down to the railroad depot called the charleston depot i think on the road going from charleston to columbia that depot was smouldering having been burned by the rebel troops on evacuating columbia mr walker question how do you know that answer only from the testimony of a great many who saw it the statement of the witness as to the rebel soldiers having set the depot on fire was objected to by mr walker on the ground that the witness does not know it of his own personal knowledge answer continued we rode to a foundry where guns had been cast and observed that and went afterwards through several streets together when i separated from general sherman selected my headquarters and gave the necessary orders for the thorough care of the troops and of the city for the night general sherman took his headquarters at the house of blanton duncan and i mine at a house near the university belonging to one of their professors after this disposition i lay down to take a little rest and was awaked first about dark by one of my aides who said the city was on fire i sent the aide captain gilbreth immediately to ascertain where the fire was and to call upon general charles r woods the division commander who had the immediate command of the city to prevent the extension of the fire i then at once dressed myself and went to the scene there i met general john a logan who was my next in rank and who commanded the corps we consulted together and took every precautionary measure we could think of to prevent the extension of the flames sometimes ordering the tearing down of sheds and small buildings protecting the citizens assisting them in the care of their property and guarding it much of the property was thrown into the streets personally i set a great many soldiers during the night to extinguishing the flames from the houses and they went to the top of the houses where water was passed up to them nearly everything in my immediate vicinity was saved a perfect gale from the northwest had commenced about the time we crossed the bridge or before that and continued all night or until i should say between two and three o'clock in the morning it seemed at first utterly useless to attempt to stop the flames they were so hot that many of our own soldiers were burnt up that night when the wind changed however it was easy to prevent any further extension of the fire 
it was done some of our men behaved badly on account of being under the influence of drink but they were replaced by fresh men as soon as their conduct came to the knowledge of the officer in charge the first brigade stones was relieved by another brigade of general wood's division and finally the entire division of general hazen was brought into the city to assist all the men who misbehaved that we could seize upon were kept under guard until the next day and punished there were quite a number of our men who had been taken prisoners and were held by the confederates they appeared in the streets of columbia soon after our arrival i do not know myself where they were confined the penitentiary was also opened and all its prisoners loosed i found during the night a reckless mob very often sometimes insulting ladies and sometimes rushing into houses and pillaging i did not see anybody setting fires general sherman himself stayed up with us for the most of the night general logan and general woods were on the ground all the time until the fire abated and i believe did everything they could to prevent it general sherman's order to me to destroy certain classes of property is a part of our record and i remember the tenor of it objected to on the ground that the record testimony should be produced answer continued i would like to make it a part of my testimony mr worthington question state your recollection of it general howard answer it was that certain buildings of a public nature should be destroyed such as arsenals armories powder mills depots but that private property and asylums so called should be protected i saw that the wind was so high that it would be impossible to destroy that class of buildings by fire on the evening of the seventeenth of february and therefore refrained at that time from putting the order into practical execution on the eighteenth and nineteenth those buildings of that class that were left from the flames were destroyed i have in my report an accurate list of them the flames of this burning of the night of the seventeenth had destroyed a part of these other buildings included in the order we destroyed also the railroad track though the order was to destroy cotton in south carolina yet no cotton remained that i know of after this fire to be destroyed none was destroyed according to my recollection question state what actual hostilities occurred near columbia immediately before its occupation if any answer we had very heavy resistance on the other side in the vicinity of congaree creek and all the way along we had also very heavy resistance in crossing the broad the last river the enemy's troops being posted in a very covered position we hardly could reach them they annoyed our troops and killed many there we had our sleeping camp shelled during the preceding night the night of the fifteenth if i remember correctly from the columbia side from a battery in the vicinity of columbia it excited the hostile feeling of the officers and soldiers very much indeed they thought it was contrary to the rules of war after we crossed the river there was scarcely any resistance i think there was none in the immediate vicinity of columbia after the mayor met us question do you know where these drunken soldiers obtained their liquor answer i know they obtained it in columbia mr walker i would like the witness to state how he knew this whether it is hearsay or what the witness it was not hearsay i know the troops obtained it in columbia i know they had not any until they went into the city i have testimony for i investigated very thoroughly that citizens carried pails of whiskey along the ranks and that the men of the leading brigade of colonel stone drank with dippers out of the pails mr worthington question you have said that you made every disposition for the security of the private property immediately after your entry into the city i wish you would state more particularly what measures you took for the security of private property Answer the orders were general as to the manner of locating a brigade or a division in a city and this brigade or division conformed to the general order i saw them by my own observation taking up a central place for the main portion of the brigade and distributing different detachments to different parts of the city locating sentinels very much as policemen are located in the city for its care then i gave verbal instructions to general charles r woods general logan not happening to be near me 
they should have been given to general logan but i gave them directly to general woods and he doubtless reported my orders to general logan he at any rate obeyed the order seeing some of these men in the first brigade under the influence of drink my first order to him was to send in another brigade that had not had any drink which he did my next order went through general logan to send a division into the city which was general hazen's division general logan himself took the immediate disposition of those two divisions they were under his command and formed a part of it he had four divisions and these were two of them the sentinels i tested myself as to the orders that had been given them and those in front of houses told me that they had orders to watch against all fires or against any pillaging parties and to see that no wrong should be done to private property where they were located one or two executed the orders so thoroughly that after the fire had caught roofs they hindered people from going in but those sentinels were at once replaced as it was the effect of the whisky which did that i took pains myself as did my staff to go about and to see as far as possible that everything was done rightly as ordered for it was a fearful condition of things with such a fire and with so many women and children in the city i would further say to show our disposition towards the inhabitants that though we were in war we left five hundred cattle for the people who had been burnt out and who were without food and also provisions and had them carted to the state house and we also assisted the mayor in a method by which he could get provisions from those outside the city question were any applications made to you by the citizens before or during the fire for guards to protect their property answer constantly question what was your reply to them answer i always sent them where we had not soldiers immediately at hand my aides themselves went lieutenant mcqueen one of my staff officers stood sentinel the whole night and protected the property of the rev a t porter of the episcopal church and received his gratitude for it question do i understand you to say that no cotton was burned in columbia by your order answer none whatever question if this fire had not occurred what would you have done with the cotton in columbia mr walker i object to all answers to that question and to all testimony elicited by it answer i had no specific orders to burn the cotton in columbia and i should not have burned it without consulting with the general-in-chief if he had ordered it to be burned i should have burned it and if he had ordered it to be spared i should have spared it by mr worthington question do you know anything about some rockets having been sent up in the vicinity of the state house on the night of the seventeenth of february answer i do question state what you know about that answer the rockets were sent up by the signal corps the left wing was quite a distance from us general blair's corps was located outside of the city and one half of general logan's and it was customary for the signal officers attached to each division or corps to communicate with their neighbors as to where they were or to give any events of the day they did it in the daytime by flags and at night by rockets and this was done that night the signals meant nothing else that i know of question do you know of any understanding before the occupation of columbia or after it was occupied that it was to be destroyed answer on the part of whom question on the part of anybody answer by the officers there was a distinct understanding that it should not be destroyed and those were the orders that is the private property asylums and so forth on the part of the men i don't know anything about it i have no knowledge whatever they always had to obey orders i think perhaps i had better finish with this on the part of those prisoners i have described though it was only hearsay objected to answer continued i will say this there may have been such a plot on the part of the prisoners supposition objected to mr worthington did you hear anything from the prisoners themselves or any of them in that regard answer i did question state what it was objected to answer a lieutenant of our army who had escaped from the jail at columbia 
told me that when he mingled with the crowd he thought that mischief was to be done he said being demoralized before he was restrained by any officer he mingled in with those who were doing mischief not specially the burning of columbia but doing mischief such as soldiers do when they sack a town i inferred from what he told me that the prisoners had no good will towards columbia objected to on the ground that the officer of the united states army should be produced to testify for himself answer continued i can ascertain his name i know him but his name has gone from my memory my report made at the time was quite full and i would rather have that as a part of the record than my simple statements from memory question have you that report here answer i have a copy of it question your retained copy answer my retained copy counsel for the united states offers to put in evidence general howard's retained copy of his report to which he has just referred to which counsel for the claimant objects and requests that a copy from the original on file at the war department be obtained counsel for the united states therefore withdraws his offer question did you at that time keep a diary of these occurrences answer i did question have you that with you answer i have question i will ask you to look at it and read therefrom your notes of february seventeenth eighteen sixty five objected to on the ground that the official report is the best evidence that can be given by the witness of the occurrences in columbia answer these are my official field notes from which i made my report reading near columbia south carolina friday february seventeenth eighteen sixty five early this morning skirmishing commenced on the banks of the broad river and a force thrown over in boats the enemy was soon driven from the banks of the river and a pontoon commenced artillery was used by us and the skirmishing continued our troops advancing up the hills on the east bank till about ten a m when the mayor of columbia appeared to our skirmish line with a flag of truce and formally surrendered the city the pontoon was soon finished and the troops commenced crossing general wood's division which had effected the crossing were encamped about town the remainder of the fifteenth corps was pushed out through the town and across the charlotte railroad where they went into position facing northeasterly the seventeenth corps commenced crossing the saluda early this forenoon and followed the fifteenth corps across the broad they are crossing the broad to-night and are taking a position on the left of the fifteenth corps general g a smith had early in the day secured some boats and had thrown some men over the congaree river these had advanced into the city and planted their colors about the same time with the pickets of the fifteenth corps the streets of the city were filled with burning cotton which the very high winds was blowing about from this is supposed to have originated a fire which broke out in the evening and which swept over about one half of the city another thing which may have started it or which at least made it worse was the fact that on the entry of our soldiers into the city many of the citizens and negroes in the hopes of conciliating our men gave them a large amount of whiskey which made the men totally unmanageable the brigade which was guarding the town colonel stones was immediately removed from the city and another one took its place no wagons except ammunition were brought over broad river to-night the general commanding remains in the city to-night in this record which must be more accurate than my memory i notice it speaks of the removal of this brigade i was thinking that it was not removed entirely when i gave my testimony mr walker question is that your handwriting answer no sir it is not i very seldom made my own record i dictated it that was at my dictation mr worthington you may read also your entry of february eighteenth eighteen sixty five answer reading columbia south carolina saturday february eighteenth eighteen sixty five the wagon trains and everything belonging to the army moved into the city to-day the two corps were engaged in destroying the railroads and public buildings to-day the general has been engaged all day in trying to alleviate the sufferings of the citizens burned out and so forth escaped soldiers and officers prisoners of war 
keep coming in having escaped from the enemy that record of the eighteenth february was not at my dictation it was by my adjutant question but the one of the seventeenth you say was dictated by you taken down by an amanuensis i suppose answer yes sir mr walker question what date did this dictation take place answer that record of the seventeenth was dictated on the morning of the eighteenth the witness was now examined as to shira and camden mr worthington question at any point in your march from savannah to goldsboro did you order the destruction of any private property cotton excepted answer i do not remember any certainly none that would not have been taken for public use if we met with whiskey in quantity whether it was public or private property we destroyed it to prevent the demoralization of our troops and if we came across a large pile of corn that could have been used for the troops or the animals and could not carry it off we destroyed it in one case we ordered the destruction of a pile of corn at some point i think between those two places but i am not quite sure i think i can state positively that there was nothing else purely private beside that ordered to be destroyed question is there anything else in this connection which you would like to state answer i would only say that the name of the officer whom i have heretofore mentioned as an escaped prisoner from columbia is captain e m carpenter sixth pennsylvania cavalry cross-examination by mr walker question do i understand you to say you were second in command in the city of columbia answer i was second in command of all the troops probably you would say principal in command in columbia question general sherman was the commanding officer of the army was he not answer general sherman was in command of all the troops in that vicinity in all that region question who was his second answer i was question did general sherman give instruction or orders except through his second in command answer he very often gave them question through others answer to others directly to the division commanders and sometimes to company commanders the witness here testified as to the burning of orangeburg question when you reached the congaree river i understand you met a resistance how many miles up the river then did you move from your first position opposite columbia before crossing answer you misunderstood my testimony it was congaree creek instead of congaree river where the severe resistance was first met but from the place opposite columbia where we halted it was three miles to the factory where we crossed the saluda congaree creek i think is some six miles below that making about nine miles from where we first struck congaree creek to the factory my memory is not very accurate about it Question you met this resistance then six miles below columbia answer the first resistance question the first severe resistance answer the first i speak of at the crossing of congaree creek question when you were directly opposite columbia did you meet with any resistance then answer all the way up question did you meet with any hostility from the columbia side answer yes sir very severe that was the worst shelling i saw question that was the night you were directly opposite columbia answer yes sir asleep in camp question who was the general commanding the forces opposed to you answer general wade hampton seemed to be in command question he fought you all along the line of the congaree river as i understand you answer general butler was in immediate command of the troops that opposed us on that side of the river but general wade hampton was on the other side of the river on the columbia side and had command of all the troops question have you ever met general wade hampton since the war answer yes sir question have you ever discussed with him the subject of the capture and destruction of columbia answer i had a conversation with him on that subject question what was the date of that conversation answer i don't remember i paid several visits to columbia while i was in charge of the freedmen's bureau and in one of those visits i had a conversation with him i do not remember and cannot recall it question was any one else present at the period of this conversation answer yes sir i think it was general r k scott some one was there 
question no one else answer i do not remember question was there any one there to take down the conversation answer not that i know of it was a mere informal conversation there was nothing pending we were merely talking as two officers do question you were not aware that there was a newspaper reporter taking down the conversation at the time answer no sir i was not if i had i would not have opened my mouth question do you know mr de fontaine answer no sir i never saw him to my knowledge question do you remember what you said in the course of that conversation answer no sir i don't recall it but i feel perfectly sure that i said about what i have said in my official report we might have conversed about some details that are not in it question did you admit or state in the course of that conversation who destroyed columbia on the night of the seventeenth of february eighteen sixty five answer yes sir i think i stated that the confederate troops set it on fire question that the confederate troops set it on fire answer yes sir i think so that was the matter of discussion between us question you did not admit that it was the federal troops excited by drink that did it answer i may have said this that doubtless men excited by drink set fires question but not your men answer i didn't say our men set them question you did not state then or at any other time that it was your belief that the united states soldiers set fire to columbia you positively swear that answer i do not wish to make a direct answer to that question because question i would like a direct answer general mr worthington let the witness finish his answer the witness i do not like to make a direct answer because i have often said that i thought some of this crowd of stragglers in which were soldiers from different parts of the army that had come into the town and from the jails as i have described set fires i have said that i believed they did that under the influence of drink but not that they primarily set the city on fire i have never said that neither do i believe it Question about what hour of the night of the seventeenth of february was it that you arrived at the scene of the conflagration answer just after dark when it was first reported to me question do you know of your own knowledge not from hearsay that there were any united states prisoners in the penitentiary at columbia on the night of the seventeenth of february or the day previous answer i know of my own knowledge that captain carpenter was a prisoner and that i put him on my staff in order to take care of him and that he came with me all the way north i do not know of my own personal knowledge of any other prisoner except by official reports question did these prisoners wear the united states uniform answer generally they had some of it left the pants were almost always blue question they were rarely fully equipped in uniform answer no very seldom question did you see the rockets fired previous to the conflagration or at any time after that period answer i did not see them question then you know nothing about them except from hearsay answer i had a signal officer on my staff who was engaged in throwing them up and so reported to me that was the best evidence in the world to me question the best evidence then would be the official reports answer yes sir question all of which are filed in the war department answer yes sir or the testimony could be obtained of this officer whose name i have mr worthington question state his name answer first lieutenant j p sampson signal corps united states army mr walker question do you know of any barns cotton gins mills machinery or any property of that nature destroyed upon plantations on your line of march answer i do know of it question there was quite a large amount of it destroyed was there not answer yes sir quite considerable question are you cognizant of the fact that large numbers of houses of private citizens were destroyed during that march answer yes sir there were a very large number question by troops of the united states answer that i do not know but i presume so by soldiers question you presume they were destroyed by the troops of the united states answer yes sir question please state whether your experience was answer let me modify my last answer sometimes they were not destroyed by our troops 
sometimes the confederates destroyed them themselves prior to our coming it was a curious thing that our troops and the confederates were often destroying the same class of property that was a curious fact that i remember distinctly particularly in the case of that cotton you speak of question are you not aware that in parishes close to pocotaligo there is scarce a dwelling house left from the ravages of the united states army answer not altogether no sir but from both armies i am perfectly aware of the desolation and beheld it with my own eyes question do you not believe a large portion of this destruction of private property to have been by troops of the united states answer no i think the confederates left us precious little question of residences i mean answer well residences that one thing alone i could not say of my own knowledge you know that generally when our troops destroyed private property they were not ordered to destroy it question i ask you to state from your belief answer if you wish me to state what i know with reference to the absolute destruction i know that i saw it with my own eyes i saw chimneys standing after the houses were burned question i ask you to state from your belief do you or do you not believe that a large number of residences gins and other private property were destroyed on the line of march and by offshoots from the main army columns brigades and companies answer i believe there were often by army followers and by army proceeders a set of scoundrels used to precede the army often and pretend to belong to it i wish that fully stated because i can give you one case where three men nothing but common robbers preceded the army pretending to belong to sherman's army went into a house piled up the furniture in the middle of the floor in the parlor set it on fire frightened the people and made them give up their silver gold and everything they had those did not belong to the army then there were scoundrels who followed the army who were very much of the same stamp question but do you not believe that there were officers in company with the troops who destroyed such property answer oh no i never knew but one case of an officer i found one officer once robbing a private house and stealing jewelry from a drawer i had him instantly arrested and would like to have had him hung question do you not know that much more property was destroyed in south carolina on the line of march than was destroyed in georgia answer yes sir much more and much more than in north carolina that was true question do you not know that there was a sort of vengeance animating the army answer yes sir i think there was question which was wreaked upon south carolina answer i have no doubt of it not the least question do you not know that the officers were often in unison with the men answer that i do not know question what do you believe answer i think not question not the superior officers i do not mean them answer i think even no subordinate officers unless they had been prisoners there were a great many who had been prisoners there were a great many who had been prisoners in south carolina and they were particularly hard i can give you one instance that occurred a poor prisoner had been hunted by dogs and his arms were considerably torn his wounds had healed so that he went back to his duty but whenever he saw a dog no matter of what kind he would kill him shoot him down at once there was a spirit of vengeance animating all those men that i had evidence of continually here the witness testifies as to the arming of the colored troops Question now coming back to columbia the saluda is the further river and the broad the nearest answer the saluda is the one to the west and the broad the one to the east the eastern branch question after you crossed the broad did you meet with any resistance answer oh yes our troops did question after getting the whole army across answer yes a very severe resistance indeed until they were dislodged when they were dislodged they retreated and ran straight through the city as fast as they could go and the mayor came out and surrendered the city see note at end of deposition with reference to this question and answer question was this resistance in the night or morning answer it was all night and from daylight until about nine o'clock perhaps between eight and nine 
question then fighting occurred from daylight until nine o'clock answer i couldn't say exactly the time i should say between eight and nine question daylight of the seventeenth do you mean answer yes sir of the morning of the seventeenth when they were dislodged from their position they retired without any further fighting question how far out from the city did the mayor go to meet you answer he met me in the city question how about the advance guard answer he met colonel stone outside of the city so colonel stone reported question how far outside answer i do not think he states in his official report question then you depend for that information upon colonel stone's official report answer yes sir question do you know of any resistance whatsoever after the surrender of the city answer do you mean in the immediate vicinity of columbia question i do answer none whatever question were you under any fear of an attack while you were in the city of columbia answer no sir we knew too well the location of the enemy's forces to be under any great apprehension there was only cavalry in our immediate vicinity and we were never very much afraid of them question if therefore it should be decided taking it for granted for argument's sake that columbia was destroyed by the united states troops it was not a military necessity answer i did not then and do not now regard it a military necessity to destroy columbia if you mean the entire city there are always certain public buildings such as powder houses arsenals places where confederate money was made public depots and such things that i would regard it as a necessity to destroy but that did not involve the destruction of the city question that might have been done so as to destroy the residences of the poor answer yes sir certainly question was it not understood by the officers in command inferior to yourself and by officers generally throughout the army that cotton was to be destroyed when found answer it was the order question you required no specific order to destroy any individual lot of cotton answer no sir question any officer finding cotton was authorized by general orders to destroy it answer i do not like to give a direct answer of yes to that question because i do not remember the terms of the order but i do remember the method of acting under the orders that general sherman gave me the orders of course will speak for themselves he directed me to destroy the cotton in georgia and south carolina as a military necessity as the confederates depended more on it for their means of existence subsisting their forces and continuing the war than upon anything else i had that order and gave that order to general logan and to general blair but i do not think they extended that order to every subordinate officer to destroy anything at his discretion i think the corps commanders kept the manner in which it was executed more under their direct supervision than to order every officer to destroy it at his will with reference to public property general sherman told me what public property he wished me to destroy and yet he gave me a specific order whenever we came to any place like columbia and that order is matter of record Question if any colonel under your command had reported to you that he had found cotton and had destroyed it would you have reprimanded him answer i most certainly should if i had restrained the execution of the order to the corps commanders i should have first asked him if he had instructions to do it if he said yes of course i would have no reprimand for him but as i say if he did it at his own option when i had restrained the execution to the corps commanders i certainly should question you say if you had restrained its execution you put a hypothetical case i want the case as it was answer i say it was a matter of record i would rather see the order before speaking i do remember the method in which it was executed as i stated it to you a little while ago but i don't recollect the wording of the order question i want to know what your action was upon any report to you of the destruction of cotton answer so far as my recollection goes cotton was destroyed under the supervision of a staff officer of the corps commander and when it was reported to me i had a careful record made of it and have retained the exact amount that was destroyed by my command 
question what commands the staff officers gave to their inferior officers you do not know you do not know whether they retained this matter entirely under their own jurisdiction answer the operation was this if it required a company or a regiment to do it the staff officer went with the command and saw the thing executed and when it was done came back and reported to his corps commander who made his daily report to me i made a record of those reports and here referring to diary is the result of the record number of bales of cotton destroyed fifteen thousand cross-examination by mr bartley appearing for claimant henry s jacobs number one sixty three note judge bartley did not appear until the direct examination of the witness had been concluded question you have spoken of the hostile feeling which the army manifested toward south carolina as a state was that manifested before you reached columbia was that state of feeling known to exist answer i noticed the first indication of it at beaufort south carolina question was that before you reached columbia answer yes sir we were first transported across from savannah to beaufort that was the first place we reached i noticed it at beaufort they were all northern men at beaufort but our troops did not seem so to understand it question with a hostile state of feeling running through the army with reference to south carolina was it not manifest that upon the army taking the capital of the state it would be burned answer i do not think i noticed anything more there than all the way along question from the state of feeling manifested was it not reasonable to apprehend that that would be the result answer yes sir and therefore all the way along and there also unusual precautions were taken for the protection of private property question did not you yourself apprehend that on the taking of columbia the burning of the city would be a probable result on the capture of it at that time answer i did not because i thought we had sufficient power over our forces to prevent anything of the kind if anything of the kind was meditated of which i had no evidence question which portion of the army first entered columbia answer general stone's brigade of general charles r wood's division of the fifteenth corps question at what time did general logan's forces enter the city answer these were logan's forces of the fifteenth corps question they were under the command of general john a logan answer yes sir question was not that portion of the army more reckless in the destruction of property than any other portion if there was any difference answer i think not i do not know that one part of the army under general sherman was more mischievous than another part during this march that is my firm belief question was not general logan's force distinguished somewhat for the destruction of property answer yes sir part of the fifteenth corps were rather remarkable prior to this campaign for the destruction of property they had been under orders to do it more than other forces question was that the part of the army that entered columbia first answer yes sir question do you say this disposition to destroy property and the manifestation of hostile feeling fell under your observation at beaufort answer yes sir question what precautions do you say were used on entering columbia to prevent that destruction of property answer the locating of a brigade as a police force thoroughly posting it as you would post a police force in a city and then the removal of the brigade as soon as something was discovered in the conduct of the men that led us to think some of them had been drinking to excess and replacing them with another brigade then the placing of the whole division in the city and then the adding to that of another division of the troops and taking prisoners all who did any mischief or who were perceived to do any mischief or wrong this was an unusual precaution in this case such as we had not early exercised in entering a village or city we were unusually careful i mean in those precautions there was a general order or rule by which we always posted a force question did that police force precede the force which first entered columbia answer yes sir they took the whole brigade for a police force question that was called the police force answer it became a police force immediately upon entering the city under the command of officers 
the orders with reference to the protection of the city and as to what property was to be destroyed and what spared were prepared by general sherman and by myself very carefully before crossing that bridge question you knew did you not that this brigade which first entered which you called the police force was governed by this hostile feeling toward south carolina as much as any other portion of the army answer i do not exactly see the bearing of that question question i will repeat it were you not aware that this brigade which first entered and which you call the police force was governed by the same hostile feeling towards south carolina that governed the army generally that the police force themselves would be as apt to burn columbia as any other portion of the army answer we had no such forces our troops obeyed orders they did not burn the cities they were told not to burn and they were not told to burn any cities or anything else question the burning then and the destruction of the city was by order answer there was not any such order question well columbia was burned answer not by order columbia was burned but not by any order of general sherman's or any of his officers at all that i know of question you have just said that no city was burned except by order answer if you will allow me to correct myself in regard to the word except i would like it i mean to say simply this that our troops were under good discipline and when they were sent to execute an order they executed the order if they were sent to protect property they protected property that was the general rule whatever feeling any individuals might have still they obeyed orders they received and executed these orders that was the general rule and they did it well question do you intend to be understood that as the army passed through south carolina no property was destroyed excepting by orders of superior officers answer no sir i never said that i said the very opposite end of part two who burnt columbia by augustin t smith this librivox recording is in the public domain part three deposition of general oliver o howard part two question you said the army was under good discipline answer yes sir question and that no property was destroyed except by order explain that if you please answer i did not say that at all if i did i wish to correct it i did not say that no property was destroyed except by order for a great deal of property was destroyed without orders all the way along by people who preceded the army and by people who followed the army question was that before you reached columbia answer all the way along all the way through south carolina before we reached columbia and after we reached columbia question wantonly and unnecessarily destroyed answer often wantonly i regard all that irregular work as wanton destruction of property myself question with that general and ungovernable hostile feeling was it not reasonable to apprehend that the capture of columbia would result in its destruction answer it may have been but i did not so apprehend it and had sufficient faith in our discipline and in the control of the officers over the men to think that columbia would not be destroyed to show that i did not apprehend it i lay down in the city and went to sleep in a place where i would have been burned up question did the entire army go into columbia answer no sir question what portion of it did answer general logan's entire corps i think passed through the city but only two divisions out of the four of which it was composed were on duty in the city stragglers from different parts of the army as i ascertained by prisoners that i took were in the city question could you give us the probable number of the force or some idea of the force which entered columbia answer i think the leading brigade had about two thousand men general wood's division had about six thousand men general hazen's division about the same question about fourteen thousand answer about twelve thousand men 
general wood's division included the leading brigade question was that the whole extent of the force that went into columbia answer all that remained in the city the other marched through and went to its camp question did the entire army march through answer no sir question what portion of the army passed through answer one half of my command my command was thirty three thousand strong there was a little over one half i should say about twenty thousand men marched through columbia question is that besides the twelve thousand that remained there answer oh no there were four divisions of general logan's corps two of which were used in the city and two were not question how long did the twenty thousand men stay in passing through did they stop at all in the city or did they pass right along answer they did not stop at all or leave the ranks at all excepting those that we brought in for guards question how long did the twelve thousand men remain in columbia answer the first brigade was relieved and removed from the city before dark i think if i remember rightly and it was replaced by another brigade about as strong as that then the remaining portion of general wood's division and used until in the night perhaps at ten or eleven o'clock general hazen's division was ordered into the city to assist in the protection of the city the property and the people in the midst of the fire when it was severe and to prevent the extension of the fire then all those troops remained there until the next day question how soon after the entry of that twelve thousand in the city did the burning of the city commence answer it commenced before we arrived there two depots were burnt before we got there and were smouldering when we arrived at the city and the cotton was on fire in the streets that was when general sherman and i arrived question that is the cotton was burning answer yes sir in the streets and the two depots were previously burned and were smouldering question what was the state of the weather and how was the road answer it was blowing a fearful gale by mr walker question that was in the night answer all day all day of the seventeenth and all night until three o'clock when the wind changed by mr bartley question was there a heavy wind in the morning when you entered answer yes sir it was blowing very hard it was difficult for us to ride with comfort question you spoke of the railroad depots as being where the cotton was burned answer no sir the depots themselves were burned one of them was the charleston railroad depot question was that depot in possession of the federal army answer no no it was burned by the confederates without any doubt whatever of course i didn't see it but i know it from the official testimony the charleston depot was right upon the street which is the prolongation of the congaree bridge the name of the street i do not remember but if i recollect rightly the depot was on the right hand side as you go up from the bridge by mr walker question on the extreme outskirts of the city answer yes sir about halfway up the hill not on the extreme outskirts but not far from the southwestern border question in what direction was the wind blowing answer from the northwest question this was in the southwestern portion of the city answer yes sir the other depot is in the northwestern part question now let us get back to the congaree river again when you crossed that river your forces were met by the mayor of columbia he surrendered the city as i understand you answer yes sir question do you know what the terms of capitulation were answer i do not question do you know whether protection was promised to life and private property answer i know it was by general sherman when he had an interview with him that is my personal knowledge but what passed between him and colonel stone i do not know question you do not know by official report answer no question do you not know that the property of foreign subjects was promised protection answer i really think not because none appeared i did not see one there was not one that i knew of who appealed to me as a foreign subject but if he had i would have looked into it and protected his property if i could question at what time did the main army enter columbia answer i should judge about half past ten in the morning question the main army i mean not the advance answer i know i should judge about half past ten in the morning question what time did the advance get in answer it was in the neighborhood of ten o'clock it was before ten 
there was a little detachment which crossed the river in boats and got over there arriving simultaneously the exact time i do not know but the time we arrived i should judge was between half past ten and eleven by my records question the main army between half past ten and eleven answer yes sir question and went on in advance of general sherman answer no sir they followed close behind all the way question now von moltke has said that the americans were an armed mob answer he denies it i believe he says he never said it question i wish your opinion on that subject at the time of the entry of that army into columbia answer i will give you my opinion by telling you that from the time i took command of the army of the tennessee at atlanta and until we arrived at washington city no division was ever ten minutes behind time from the commencement of the execution of an order and i never commanded an armed force in a better state of discipline question do you not believe that the army entering columbia was in as perfect a state of discipline as an army well could be answer as well as an army similarly situated could well be i say similarly situated because we were in the heart of an enemy's country and subsisting on an enemy's country to accomplish this is the hardest problem a general ever has to solve question they obeyed commands readily answer readily question were under thorough discipline in fact i am very particular on this point answer under very good discipline indeed if it was to march north north we marched if we wanted to attack the enemy we attacked them and if we did not we did not question one of the witnesses in the case of cowan gravelly versus the united states uses these words in his deposition filed in this case on page fifteen of the printed testimony quote, i witnessed the seventeenth army corps march through the main street and was struck by the perfect order and equipment of the said corps End quote. Answer he must have meant the fifteenth corps that marched through the main street i think question it does not matter about that i do not care to be particular on that subject he goes on to say that from the discipline of this corps it would have been easy to have prevented any pillage at that time if it was so desired is that a fact answer i think it is not a fact nor a fair inference from the discipline of the command question what i mean to say is had you witnessed it in marching through the main street could you not have put a stop to any pillaging going on right in front of your eyes answer yes sir certainly question you had troops enough under your command answer certainly i saw the pillaging the night i was there and put a stop to it instantly question now i wish you to state to me on your oath when the main army marched down main street did you not find that the advanced guard were disbanded answer no they were not question the guard that had preceded you i mean answer they were not question did you see at no time during the day disbanded soldiers of your army breaking into the stores answer no sir question publicly breaking into stores in the face of staff officers answer i did not question you know nothing of the pillage of main street during the hours of daylight by your army answer no sir Question. You don't know of any store on Main Street that was broken into. Answer. I saw nothing of the kind, and nothing of the kind was reported to us at all. Question. This is the first you ever heard of the pillaging of stores on Main Street by daylight? Answer. Yes, sir. The first I have heard of it. Question. I do not ask you of your own knowledge, but is this the first you have heard of the manner in which stores were broken into and publicly robbed by your troops? or if you object to the word robbed say a goods taken therefrom answer i saw some parties during the night with my own eyes question i mean during the hours of daylight answer this is the first i ever heard of it i did not know any such thing took place at all question if any of the officers of the united states army had witnessed such pillaging was it not their duty to have prevented it answer of course at once question was it not in their power to have prevented it answer well here was a little break in that power in this case owing to this unusual thing in giving whiskey to the men question i am speaking of the hours of daylight answer i say in the hours of daylight if it had not been for that such a thing would have been impossible 
question taking it for granted now that the officers marching through the streets with the main army during the hours of daylight seeing the soldiers of your army disbanded and pillaging stores and shops on each side of their line of march had they not it in their power to have detached a force sufficient to have stopped such pillaging along the line answer any officer of sufficient rank could have done it but that does not mean that a lieutenant might step out of one company and take possession of another company question any colonel of a regiment could have done it answer yes sir the whole demoralization of that first brigade was caused by the whiskey and the brigade was replaced by another as soon as the facts were discovered question was there not plenty of whiskey in the stores of columbia and in the shops of that city answer there was question if your men had broken into these stores is it not more than probable that they helped themselves answer it was more than probable question are you prepared to state that neither officers under your command nor other generals or officers under their command acquiesced in the destruction of columbia by united states troops answer with the exception of this officer whose name i gave you this morning i do not know of one officer who acquiesced in its destruction question but you are not prepared to say that they did not answer no you know there were five thousand of them there question did the citizens meet you with hostility answer no not me question i mean the troops not you individually answer i could not say question yet they gave them pails full of whiskey answer that was done kindly i think it was done with a view of conciliating the troops so i understood at the time and i put it down so in the report question taking it for granted that it was the desire of general sherman or of his superiors in command to destroy columbia or have it destroyed or to allow it to be accidentally destroyed would it not have been easy for him to have had it done without giving any direct order answer yes question i mean if there were such a desire on the part of general sherman or his superiors answer we were so disconnected with everybody that there could not be any connection with his superiors about it and they didn't know we were going to columbia question i differ with you on that point and therefore i put a hypothetical case suppose even you yourself desired to destroy columbia or any other city what corps of the army would you have been likely to have employed for that work answer i want to say to you that an answer to that question would be rather invidious question it is a question of the utmost importance to me answer there is a great deal of feeling between corps and for me to select a corps would be something i should not like to do question i insist upon a reply answer from my knowledge of the army i should answer you that a portion of the left wing of the then twentieth corps that had once been under my command as the eleventh army corps would have made the most complete destruction of a city of any in the whole army i am sorry to answer the question but you ask it so pertinaciously that i give you that as my opinion blenker's old division used to annihilate property more rapidly than any other i ever saw question would not the fifteenth army corps have done the work as well answer the fifteenth corps did pretty well in the destruction of property but i really do not think that they equalled the other question had they not a reputation for doing their work of this character well answer they did work of every kind well question i allude particularly to their leaving their mark through the portions of country along which they passed by the devastation of property had they not a reputation for that answer yes they had they were taken on several expeditions where the sole object was to cripple the enemy by the destruction of property and i do not think there was any corps which had a reputation that exceeded theirs in the destruction of property they gave a sort of double twist to all the railroad iron they destroyed twisted it around the trees and then twisted it around itself again Question they were pretty clever fellows were they not in their business answer they did it pretty well and pretty thoroughly question did you ever have any idea of going to charleston on this march answer no sir question didn't you think there was some chance of your being able to throw one of the army corps into charleston answer none i knew the plan of the campaign was not to go to charleston at all 
but the enemy thought we were going there we went right up the right bank of the salt cahatchee i was second in command and if general sherman had been killed i should have executed his general plan i had no idea of going to charleston at all charleston fell of itself question did you ever hear anything of sowing charleston with salt answer no question was there not a general impression throughout the north that if charleston was captured they would sow it with salt answer i do not know that i think there was a kindly feeling towards charleston inspired by general sheridan himself who had lived there quite a time question you think general sherman had no such idea at any rate answer no he had no idea of destroying charleston in any way question you do not think he would have thrown the fifteenth corps into charleston answer he could have done it of course he could have thrown in any detachment whether he pleased but we didn't wish to do that question you do not know that he had that idea at one time answer oh i think he had not or he would have told me we conversed fully with reference to it he may have had it in his mind at some time but i did not know it question you say that the police force you stationed in columbia were the fifteenth corps answer yes sir question you spoke of summoning a relief please explain was this relief summoned prior to your reaching the ground at the time of the conflagration or subsequent thereto answer immediately on my going into the city as soon as i observed these men under the influence of drink that was the first relief but the second was in the night question the second was in the night answer yes sir question what corps did these reliefs belong to answer the fifteenth corps question all of them answer all of them the other corps was not there question do you not know that the pile of cotton you speak of as having been on fire upon your entry into the city was extinguished answer they were endeavouring to extinguish it as we passed along but i do not know that it was extinguished question was it not under control answer yes sir i thought so at the time though the wind was blowing very furiously and little bits were all over the trees houses and everywhere when i first heard of the fire in the evening i presumed of course that it came from that burning cotton my presumption was at once that it extended from that question that is not your idea now though answer yes it is question you believe that the conflagration in columbia arose from the cotton that was burning answer certainly question and nothing else answer well primarily i think it did from that of course the depots were burned prior to our entering the city as i have said before several times and there were undoubtedly fires set during the night by somebody i say there were fires set during the night from my knowledge of directions that is an inference from my common sense rather than what i observed question what portion of the city was the cotton in answer in what we call main street or richardson street not very far from the market referring to map between laurel and the state house question that would be to the southwest of the city would it not or due west answer no you come in from the north and extend right down the river and when you are about halfway to the state house you find this cotton lying along the street the witness was here shown the map appended to the claimant's proof in the case of wood and hayworth against the united states number one o three it was not far from the market house pointing to a place on richardson street between laurel and the capitol question how large was this pile of cotton answer i couldn't tell you it seemed to be strewn about question about twenty bales answer yes sir perhaps more question and it was burning at ten o'clock in the morning answer yes when we entered question and was most of it burned answer no sir question a large portion of it answer it seemed to be on fire all along it was not in bales it was broken open it seemed to be a kind of a common pile which was smouldering they were playing on it with an engine when we came in question and the fire at night did not break out until after dark answer after dark was the first fire that i heard of of any building on fire but it was very soon after dark just about dusk question you stated that some of your soldiers were burned answer yes sir question arising from their drunkenness answer i so judged 
it might not have been from that the fire spread very rapidly question you stated that the penitentiary was full answer no i did not state that it was full i said broken open question you spoke of reckless mobs answer i did question which came from the penitentiary answer some of them question do you know of your own knowledge of any one having been in that penitentiary besides one individual answer no sir not of my own knowledge by mr wells appearing for claimants cases numbers three seventy one four fifty eight and four fifty nine question you say you knew of your own knowledge that captain carpenter was in prison now you know not from your own knowledge but from his report answer yes i did not see him there question you only know of his being in prison from his having reported to you answer he reported to me as a prisoner from that place that is all the knowledge i have by mr walker question you burned the public property in columbia on the eighteenth or nineteenth of february did you not answer yes sir question do i understand you to say that subsequent to the night of the seventeenth you know that no cotton was destroyed answer no sir i say i do not know of any that was destroyed subsequent to that in columbia question but you are not prepared to say that there was none destroyed by order answer no sir i am not prepared to say that there was not cotton destroyed i can give you just what property was destroyed by my order the witness here testifies as to camden and Shira. Question: was there any cotton left in north carolina unburned in the line of march of the army answer not to my knowledge i did not intend to leave any question did not all the officers and soldiers of the army act upon the knowledge of that general order to destroy it all answer no sir not the soldiers and i think not the subordinate officers general logan would be better able to say than myself how he executed the order but my impression is as i have already stated on cross-examination that it was generally done under the direct supervision of a staff officer detailed for that purpose question and the destruction of cotton belonging to private parties in south carolina was regarded as a military necessity to cripple the confederates answer yes sir a very large proportion of the cotton was in private hands question would not the destruction of the railroad and depot have effectually prevented the making of cotton valuable to any person objected to as calling for an opinion answer no it would not have been effectual because we got into the habit of repairing railroads so rapidly that they were soon replaced mr walker question after the fifteenth corps had twisted railroad bars could they be used again generally in a hurry answer not often that was not the way they did it they would tear up some side road that they did not consider of any particular importance and make their main stems our troops used to build very rapidly indeed we had to the enemy destroyed as rapidly as we question had they so many lines through the south that they could tear up side roads answer oh yes it was often done question through south carolina on the line of your march answer no sir they did not repair our damage for a long time that was the end off question don't you know from the number of railroad lines in south carolina that they could not after you had done with them answer i think it would have been very difficult for them to have done it but they might have repaired the main stem that is they could have got railroad iron enough to have done that i mean for the main line of transportation through the country one line across the state witness testifies here as to individual lots of cotton by mr mackey appearing for claimants in case number two two eight question do you know of any officer being under the influence of liquor on the night of the seventeenth of february answer yes sir i saw one in the night i did not know his name question what rank was he answer he was a lieutenant question did you see any during the day answer no sir i never saw but this one under the influence of drink and he was a lieutenant question did you hear of any answer yes sir question did you hear of any being so answer no i only heard of one question besides the one that you saw answer yes sir 
by mr wells question you say it was a matter of military necessity to destroy this cotton will you state distinctly how this was a matter of military necessity and why it was i am referring of course to both private and public cotton answer one view was that the enemy depended upon the cotton more than upon any other product to raise means both to carry on the war and to prolong it and therefore joined in the opinion that the destruction of the cotton would be the quickest way to bring the war to a conclusion to save the effusion of blood on that ground and no other i put it question were not the ports blockaded so that this cotton could not be shipped abroad at the time that this expedition was undertaken answer that i do not know even if they were still the fact of its existence was a fact of wealth among the people upon which the government could eventually depend particularly where they could take everything they had for taxes so that the very fact of the existence of the cotton was something on which to build and when it was destroyed it took away that foundation question still if there was no exchangeable value arising from this cotton by shipping abroad could the confederate government reasonably be supposed to obtain any resources from it and was the united states government and its army justified in destroying private property upon such a basis objected to by the counsel for the united states as calling for a matter of opinion and asking the witness to decide a question which it is for the commission to decide mr wells the witness said it was a military necessity and i ask wherein and on what basis answer my answer to it would be this that as long as the confederate bonds had any value in a foreign market that value must of course be based on some credit the belief in the holding of some property the reality we could not destroy but the cotton which was so valuable particularly at that time was a matter of credit the very existence of it was a matter of credit people around knew they would get it eventually if it was not destroyed my only argument ever in favor of saving it towards the close of the war in my own mind and that i offered at times was that now we were able to protect it and therefore it would increase the products of our own country but prior to that i believed it would be a good thing to destroy it for the sake of bringing the war to a speedy conclusion then again there was another way in which we regarded this matter of a military necessity that nothing would impress the inhabitants so much as to destroy that which they regarded as of more importance to them than anything else and upon which they then relied almost altogether for their income the cotton gins and everything connected with it Question were not the united states forces now able to prevent by the process which they had taken in cutting up the railway this cotton from getting out into the market and keeping it sealed up where it was answer that would be a matter really contingent at that time while the confederate armies were in the field the moment generals lee johnston hardy and smith had surrendered then of course we could prevent anything of that kind but prior to that surrender of course it hung upon the result of engagements that had not yet taken place i might also add general hood to the list as yet we did not know that any engagement had taken place between general thomas and general hood question you have i believe stated in your examination that the general plan of your expedition was the destruction of all public buildings and all cotton along the whole line of march answer more than that railroads also question and you also as i understand have testified and do testify that such general orders were given to the corps commanders and handed down by them to inferior officers and that they had acted from the time you landed at beaufort upon that principle answer no sir i did not state that in that way question well how far will you state that to be the fact answer i will state that general orders existed for the destruction of the cotton but i am not willing to state that the orders were handed down to the subordinates for my impression is that the orders were executed by the staff officers of the general commanding in the army the generals commanding the wings and the generals commanding the corps supervising the operation and reporting regularly when it was done 
question would it not have been as a matter of practical result naturally the effect that the cotton would have been destroyed in the principal towns which you reached in your march unless some specific order had been issued under these general orders restraining the destruction answer certainly we took great pains to see it done it being the order you know it was not worth while to shirk it it was the general order to do it and when i had an order to do anything anybody knew always that it would be pretty thoroughly done question was there any specific orders issued restraining the destruction of public property railways and cotton in columbia answer no there was an order to do it distinct and clear given me before we crossed the river question a specific order to destroy answer yes sir but to spare private property that was on the order itself you named public property altogether and of a public nature question no i did not mean that alone but i mean cotton both public and private answer i will say certainly that there were no specific orders to destroy the cotton in the city i had command of the city entirely i should not have proceeded to have destroyed the cotton in the city without consulting with the general-in-chief who did not embrace it in his order to me the reason was because there was a great deal of it in the city and i did not know at that time how much longer he would continue his work of the destruction of the cotton it was a question that we conversed about very often general logan general blair and myself how much longer it would be best for our government to continue the destruction of the cotton and then again i would not have done it because it would have endangered the burning of the city to have burnt cotton when the wind was blowing i did not even undertake to destroy the buildings on account of it that night i did not put the order in execution at all question then if you had some time at least previous to the destruction of columbia grave doubts as to the military necessity of destroying this cotton you have described answer interrupting no i had no doubts at all with regard to it none whatever but i was looking for a time when the necessity would cease i began myself to feel very confident that we would thoroughly conquer in a very short time and i wished of course the moment i safely could to see the destruction of all property cease it is a great curse to a nation to destroy its property as a general rule but a military necessity presses you and under that you destroy it i have no pleasure in the destruction of property of any kind question would not the soldiers naturally at columbia no specific order having been issued restraining the destruction of private property have engaged in it whether in liquor or not answer no they would not they did not at chira and they did not at fayetteville by mr walker question do i understand you to say that your soldiers would not and did not burn cotton in columbia answer mr wells said naturally he wanted to know if they would not naturally have destroyed it and i said no question i will put it in the form of a question as a fact did they not at the request of counsel the question at the top of the page was here read for the information of the witness answer i thought you said cotton question i mean private property generally of course cotton unless stored in some confederate warehouses is private cotton i understand answer when you speak of a body of troops you know what they are made of generally the great proportion of the men are honestly trying to do their duty and in the ranks do not do a thing without orders they do not go out and misbehave but there are some men who are irregular and who commit mischief and do wrong at chira i have an example in my mind with respect to private property a man had a watch taken from his neck he was frightened very much about it in the presence of his wife and daughter he told me he felt very badly about losing it and wanted to know if i let my soldiers take a watch off a man's person i said no well he said they did it i asked him to describe the man to me his daughter did describe him i found him out had his head shaved and had him drummed out of the service that shows what i did with a man who performed such an act and our discipline was of that kind but i know there were a great many men 
who would steal and rob and do all sorts of mischief by mr walker question general as a matter of fact did not the united states army or a part of it under the command of officers set fire to cotton when they were in the city of columbia answer i do not know of any instance in which they did it question can you say they did not answer no i never can say that it is impossible to say they did not i have on my record a literal list of what was destroyed by my orders and cotton is not embraced in it the witness here testifies as to individual lots of cotton redirect examination by mr worthington question i wish to ask you a question that i dislike to propound but some insinuations which seem to be contained in questions which have been asked you in cross-examination require it how happened it that the fifteenth corps and not the seventeenth corps first entered the city of columbia was it by your order or by the order of general sherman and was there any design in putting the fifteenth corps first and if so what was it answer no sir it was simply that the fifteenth corps occupied the right in our operations and the seventeenth the left they would naturally have the lead in going into columbia question was it by your order or general sherman's order that that corps happened to have the leading position answer mine there was no selection and no election it occupied the right in all these operations and came first to the bridges the left had its operations a little further to the left and followed it naturally by mr wells question you had simply to post them into positions i suppose and they kept that position and you would not naturally shift them from one position to another answer i would sometimes i changed purposely to have the seventeenth corps in advance particularly if the fifteenth corps had been some time in advance when we were along the same line generally they moved in parallel lines i moved in three columns habitually and sometimes four by mr worthington question had the soldiers of the fifteenth and seventeenth corps at any time previous while under your command occupied cities in south carolina and georgia answer they occupied beaufort and they occupied orangeburg previous to columbia they were not very large cities they were towns question had you any reason to fear prior to the hour you were aroused on the evening of the seventeenth of february and informed that columbia was on fire the destruction of the city or any part of it answer i had sufficient reason to fear that injury might be done to the city by irresponsible men connected with the army or not connected with the army to take all the necessary precautions which i did unusual precautions i may say for a commander of an army to take generally speaking i would have sent to general woods to take charge of this city and would have left him to do it himself without any positive specific instructions i did not do it in this case i have intimated that some of our soldiers felt specifically aggrieved at south carolina they seemed to regard south carolina as in a measure the cause of the war and of their sufferings and for that reason i took unusual precautions and i wished to protect private property i often guarded private property and sent guards many miles to do it guarding against stragglers and irresponsible parties my opinion with reference to the burning of columbia is a different thing your question is had i any reason to apprehend it and i am only showing what reasons we had to apprehend danger question did you or not suppose the city was safe when you retired for the evening answer i did and went to sleep there question you have spoken of the excellent discipline of your soldiers did that ordinarily continue after they had been furnished with liquor and made drunk was it so easy for you to control them then answer it was not the number that was under the influence of drink was comparatively small and they were brought under guard in a very short time by mr walker question were not most of the places through which you passed on your route to columbia through south carolina destroyed by someone you do not say who answer no not so midway when i left it was in good condition 
mr sim's property was left in good condition i sent through general blair and protected his library by a sentinel question but don't you know a great many that were destroyed answer i went over the country afterwards and it was pretty completely cleared out i saw the chimneys and scarcely anything left in a great portion of the country passing through there i went down through it and that was what i observed the witness testifies here as to orangeburg and blackville o o howard note upon reading over by general howard of this deposition he states referring to cross question number seventy seven that he understood the question to refer to the leading brigade and not to the whole army also referring to cross interrogatory number two thirty nine he states that he understood the question to refer to south carolina and not to north carolina i james o Clefane, united states commissioner for the district of columbia do hereby certify that at the request of counsel for the united states i caused the above-mentioned o o howard deponent in the foregoing deposition to come before me at the time and place in the caption mentioned that said deponent was by me sworn to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth that said deposition was reduced to writing by me and was carefully read to or by deponent before being signed by him and deponent then and there in my presence subscribed the same and i further certify that i have no interest direct or indirect in the claim to which the above deposition relates and am not the agent or attorney of any person having any interest therein witness my hand at the city of washington d c this tenth day of december eighteen seventy two james o clefane adjourned till wednesday december eleventh eighteen seventy two at the same hour and place james o clefane united states commissioner end of part three of who burnt columbia by augustine t smith this librivox recording is in the public domain part four deposition of general william tecumseh sherman part one adjourned till wednesday december the eleventh eighteen seventy two at the same hour and place james o clefane united states commissioner washington december eleventh eighteen seventy two commission met pursuant to adjournment present counsel on either side the examination of witnesses was proceeded with as follows deposition of william t sherman the deposition of william t sherman a witness produced sworn and examined on the part and behalf of the united states in the cause above entitled now depending before the above-named commission taken before me james o clefane united states commissioner for the district of columbia at the city of washington d c on the eleventh day of december eighteen seventy two pursuant to a notice to that effect duly given by the agent and counsel of the united states mr a s worthington appeared on behalf of the united states messrs george r walker n dana wells and edward janine appeared on behalf of the claimants the said william t sherman having been first by me duly sworn to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth deposes and says my name is william t sherman my age is fifty-two years my residence is washington d c i am a native of ohio my position is that of general of the united states army preliminary questions propounded by the officer taking this deposition have you any interest direct or indirect in the claim which is the subject matter of the above entitled cause or of this examination if so state the nature and extent of such interest answer i have none being examined by a s worthington of counsel for the united states the witness further deposes and says while on my march through the south in eighteen sixty four sixty five 
i was a major general in the regular army i am now general of the army of the united states the witness here testifies to occurrences in georgia question please refer to any orders that were issued while you were in savannah relating to private property and to the maintenance of good order answer i find here referring to a printed volume in his hand one order dated twenty fourth of december eighteen sixty four referring to rules which were to govern the officers in regard to public and private property in the city of savannah it is number one forty one special field order and dated december twenty fourth eighteen sixty four continuation as to orders and incidents in georgia question during the march of your army from savannah to goldsboro north carolina what orders were in force concerning the preservation or destruction of property please refer to the orders by number and date answer glancing at the printed volume before referred to the same troops which had crossed from atlanta to savannah continued their march from the direction of savannah northward passing through the state of south carolina in its whole length and were covered by the same orders and the same rules of discipline which had prevailed previously objected to by messrs walker and wells on the ground that they knew nothing whatever regarding the orders referred to that they had neither seen the originals nor certified copies and had no knowledge they were official that while such orders may have been issued contrary orders may have been issued the next day witness all these orders have been printed and published over and over again mr walker no official copies have ever been furnished us witness they are all filed and the war department will furnish you with official copies whenever you ask for them mr walker it is not for us to ask for them but for the united states to furnish them question please state whether in your march through south carolina you at any time authorized the destruction of private property answer i did corps commanders were at all times authorized to destroy private property where it fulfilled any military uses and to the commanders of all detachments mr walker i must ask this question before you go on general i notice you have in your hand a printed volume and that you are apparently reading from the same i desire to know what it is you are reading from i think i have a right to know that mr worthington stated that he proposed to examine the witness in his own way and if there was any objection it could be made regularly and entered upon the record mr walker then we object to general sherman in his examination in this case reading from a volume of which we know nothing it never having been presented to us for our inspection witness the volume i have in my hand is my own memoranda bearing my own signature and what i state from it i desire to have regarded as testimony given in the case mr walker i must then inquire general whether that memoranda of which you speak is in your handwriting witness it is not but it was printed under my supervision in the war department and every word of it was carefully examined before it went to the press and has been since mr walker we object to it as not being in the handwriting of the witness and we not knowing that the copy produced here is an official copy and even if we were satisfied on that point we would further object to it on the ground that the original if in existence is the best evidence and should be produced examination resumed question i will now repeat the question i asked you and that is whether at any time in your march through south carolina you authorized the destruction of private property and if so in what instances and for what purposes answer i required the destruction of all railways depots foundries and arsenals i generally in person saw that they were so destroyed i never gave an order for the destruction of a private dwelling more especially if it were occupied by a family question did you authorize the destruction of cotton generally answer 
i authorized the destruction of cotton wherever encountered regarding it as one of the principal resources of the enemy in carrying on the war it was a saleable article easily converted into money which was notoriously used for purchase of arms in europe it was made the basis of one of the principal loans of the southern confederation mr walker objects to this testimony as being matter of argument question during your march through south carolina how did your different corps communicate with each other at night answer by signals and by couriers sent from one to the other generally by signals of rockets question about what time in the evening was it customary to send up these rockets answer as soon as the night was far enough advanced for rockets to be seen in the dark question by mr walker when necessary answer always every night to indicate the position of heads of columns question do you know whether or not rockets were sent up on the evening you arrived at columbia for that purpose answer i did not see them but i presume the order was obeyed and from the head of every other column some of which were twelve miles from there question you have heretofore been examined generally with reference to the burning of columbia in the case of james j brown number thirty seven do you reaffirm what was stated in that deposition mr walker objected on the ground that no notice had been given them that the testimony in that case was to be used in the cases in which himself and mr wells appeared and that they had had no opportunity of examining the testimony with a view to cross-examination answer i testified in some case when in egypt i think it was in the month of february or march i have not seen a record of that testimony since i gave it but i take it for granted that what i swore to then was true my memory of these events is very clear and yet i always prefer to refer to dates and facts which are of record and in my possession objected to by mr walker and mr wells on the ground that they were entirely ignorant of what the witness swore to on the occasion mentioned nor was it stated by the witness question state whether you authorize the destruction of any private property at columbia except such property as you have enumerated in your answer to the previous interrogatory answer none whatever on the contrary i forbade the destruction of private property libraries colleges and dwellings question please state where you were when the fire broke out answer the fire was burning a day and a half or two days before we got into columbia but was local confined to the big bridge across the river the depot known as the charleston depot close by the bridge and the railroad depot on the opposite side of the town known as the charlotte depot and cotton piled up along the various streets and which was burning at least twelve hours before any soldier belonging to my army had gotten within the limits of the city of columbia on the night of our arrival after we had been in quiet possession of the city for about twelve hours a fire originated near the old market house it must have been after dark for i saw the light shining on the walls of the room in which i was and sent one of my aide-de-camps down about a mile to see what was the matter and he came back and told me that the drug store diagonally opposite the old market house was burning that the wind was very strong and the fire was spreading i inquired if he had seen the commanding officer of the brigade which constituted the provost guard and if he was doing his best to prevent an extension of the flames and he told me that he had seen general charles r woods himself on the ground and that the troops were doing seemingly all they could to check or limit the flames to that one block that must have been about oh, seven and a half o'clock in the evening we had entered the town about eleven o'clock that morning the fire continued to increase and a second time i sent one of my aides down becoming uneasy about it and he returned saying that the fire appeared to be beyond all control and he had seen general logan and general howard there whose troops occupied the city howard being in chief command 
logan in command of the fifteenth corps and charles r woods in command of the troops immediately quartered in the city the fire continued to rage until after midnight when i went down myself to walk around the burning district i saw the flames carried sometimes two blocks by the force of the wind and the fire spreading in every direction and from natural causes i assisted mr simmons who had married a miss rag of my acquaintance to move his family and effects from the house threatened up to my own which was the house of blanton duncan then contractor for the manufacturers of confederate money that family was removed but the house fortunately did not burn i was myself out until four o'clock in the morning and i believe those troops worked as faithfully as any troops ever did mr walker objects to all statements of the witness based upon what others told him i admit that i saw myself one or more drunken men and ordered the arrest of one to effect which one of my aide-de-camp colonel dayton had to shoot him with a pistol the fire was most fearful beyond all question but i saw with my own eyes no fire originated and i always supposed that it originated in that burning pile of cotton which i saw with my own eyes mr walker i object to this statement of the witness inasmuch as it is supposition witness there is no supposition about it at all i saw with my own eyes about eleven o'clock that morning as i rode in the city of columbia cotton piled along the main street which if prolonged would run up against the state house very near the old market house and very near that drug store where my aide-de-camp reported the fire had originated the wind was very strong without a cloud in the sky and it tossed and pitched the cotton about lodging it in the trees and on the eaves of houses all or most of which were of wood so that many of us were prompted to remark i know i did at least that it presented the appearance of a snowstorm prior to the great conflagration immediately on reaching the central part of the city myself and staff general howard the immediate commander of the troops following us riding at my side started to examine the city question by mr walker when was this answer in the morning on entering the city we rode down to the railroad depot which i have described as the charleston depot and found the depot burned and many piles of cornmeal and corn burning we gave some direction to some of the soldiers who were there to pile aside the good so as to save as much as possible because we needed it i continued my ride along the railway in the direction of some foundries i suppose about five hundred or six hundred yards down the stream from the depot along the track when some picket rode up to me and told me not to go too far that the rebels were on the hill in sight and i might get a shot turning back in the direction of the new state house i noticed a soldier coming down the street drunk i called general howard's attention to the fact saying general you had better look out or you will have hell to pay you had better go and see about it in person question by mr walker this was in the morning too answer yes sir and before the fire broke out he general howard afterward reported to me that he had relieved the brigade of stone stone's brigade being the first to enter columbia and constituting the provost guard and had selected another brigade of the same division to act as provost guard under immediate direction of general charles r woods an officer of the regular army and an officer of as high character as any in this or any other country he is still living to him was entrusted the safety and general good order of the city of columbia during our occupation he is now i think in newark ohio he is still an officer in the regular army lieutenant colonel fifth infantry i should suppose he could give as much personal testimony as any man living general john a logan commanded the corps to which general charles r wood's division belonged he was also quartered near columbia in the preston house which was not burned the house in which i was quartered was not burnt either it was a little remote separated by vacant lots from the body of the town 
mr walker desired to have it noted that his objection to the admission of testimony taken in egypt was taken because neither he nor mr wells had ever seen it and therefore could not proceed to cross-examine the witness in regard to it he wished it stated further that he was not prepared to say that he would not object to it if he had seen it witness here testifies to occurrences in georgia counsel for the united states here tenders to mr walker a copy of the deposition of general sherman taken in egypt in the case of joseph j brown number thirty seven mr walker states that he cannot withdraw his objections to the admission of this testimony having had no time to look at it and not being able to do so while the examination is going on they must therefore as far as they are concerned regard it as an ex parte statement which they must object to being received in evidence counsel for the united states desires the commissioner to note that counsel for the claimants retains the deposition mr walker replies that he retains what purports to be a copy of the deposition cross-examination by mr walker in regard to the capture of certain horses in columbia were there orders for the capture of all horses answer yes sir question horses therefore taken from different stables in columbia were taken by your orders answer yes sir testimony as to occurrences before reaching columbia question your idea upon leaving savannah was to strike what point in north carolina answer my point was orangeburg in the first place to cut charleston off from augusta by destroying a section of that road and thence to swing around to orangeburg and threaten the road from charleston to the north by florence but before i had accomplished this last movement the rebel army in charleston commanded by william j hardy had burned the place and evacuated it and had escaped to the north therefore it was unnecessary for me to take my army over on the florence road question you thought however at one time of taking charleston in the rear answer never i put out that idea for the purpose of misleading i never proposed to take charleston in the rear i am very familiar with the ground there question and you never did at any time contemplate any such a thing answer i never at any time contemplated a direct attack upon charleston question you thought at one time however of throwing a wing of your army into charleston answer from the sea question you at no time thought of taking part of the army in which your immediate command was into the city of charleston answer no sir i was aiming at the higher game namely richmond counsel i am aware of that fact general witness upon leaving savannah i ordered a division to be held in readiness at port royal and to watch the effect upon charleston when my army was to its rear and if evacuated to take possession immediately but if the army remained in charleston to disembark at bull's bay and close the road which leads from mount pleasant up towards georgetown which i knew would result in hardy's getting out of that place very quickly question but you never had at any time in the course of your march any notion nor any remote idea of throwing any part of your army into the city of charleston answer i had not in my official reports which state my purposes i there say that i regarded charleston as a dead cock in the pit already question your idea then was to march your army through columbia answer yes sir question or by columbia answer right through columbia question were you at any time before crossing the savannah river or before reaching columbia aware of a strong spirit of vengeance a desire for vengeance animating your troops to be wreaked upon south carolina answer i was the feeling was universal and pervaded all ranks question officers and all answer officers and all we looked upon south carolina as the cause of our woes question and thought that she thoroughly deserved severe treatment 
A. Yes, sir, that she thoroughly deserved extirpation. Q. You had every reason to believe that the army would carry out their determination in this respect? A. Except when restrained by order and discipline. Q. General, it is alleged that von Moltke has said that your army was an armed mob. A. Von Moltke was never fool enough to say that. I have seen von Moltke in person. I did not ask him the question because I did not presume that he was such an ass as to say that. Question. You deny that statement, do you? Answer. Our army was as good an army as the Prussians ever had, and von Moltke is a man of too good sense to have made any such statement as has been attributed to him. Question. We have the strongest proof, General, of the fact that it was a wonderfully well-disciplined army. Answer. Von Moltke is a man of wonderful sense and sagacity, and I don't believe he ever said anything that could be tortured into that. He may have said that our armies in America, organized as they were, composed as they were, and moving over a country so different from Europe, form no guide or rule in European warfare, but that the Prussian army did learn many a lesson and profited by them from our war is manifest, and they and their officers are prompt to acknowledge it. Question. General, I have often heard your enemies in the South admit the perfect discipline of your troops. Answer. We could not have done what we did do unless we had kept them under good discipline. Question. Can you tell me anything about the 15th Corps? Answer. Yes, indeed I can. I know all about it. They were as fine a body of men as ever trod shoe leather. Question. They had the reputation of doing their work well? Answer. Yes, sir. Thoroughly. Question. Whether it was to ravish a country or take a city? Answer. Strange to say, in the whole of our march, I never heard of but two cases of ravishment, if you mean rape. Counsel, Mr. Walker, I do not mean rape. Answer. For going into a fight and going through a fight, they were the men they were described to be. Question. Hadn't they a reputation in Mississippi? Answer. They had a very high reputation in Mississippi question had they not a reputation there for leaving their mark upon the country answer yes sir they left their marks wherever they went question you were aware of this answer perfectly question when you reached savannah answer indeed i was i knew every officer and every private in that corps question they were a wild set were they not answer no sir they were composed of first-rate men farmers and mechanics and men who are to-day as good citizens as we have in our country but who went to war in earnest they were mostly western men from ohio and illinois question they were good men for destroying property answer yes sir when told to do so they destroyed it very quickly question when not told to do so if they thought they might do it and it not be objectionable to their officers Answer. They could do their work very thoroughly when they undertook it. Question. Were they in the habit of destroying property? Answer. No, sir. I don't think they were, more than was necessary. They were a very kind set of men, and I have known them frequently to share their rations with citizens, people along the country. I have often seen it done with my own eyes. Question. Do you mean to say that you were not aware when you were in the city of Beaufort, or, say, Orangeburg, before you reached Columbia, that the 15th Corps were a corps distinguished for the marks they left upon the country through which they passed? Answer. I may have known it, and very likely I did. I knew generally what was going on. Question. I asked you, did you know it? I should like you to answer that question. When you reached the village of Orangeburg, before you arrived at Columbia, were you not aware that the 15th Corps were remarkable for the manner in which they left their mark upon the country through which they passed? Witness. Explain what you mean by mark. Counsel. Devastation. Answer. They killed every rebel within range of their guns and left their dead bodies to mark the ground. Question. Devastation of property, I mean. 
answer as to devastation of property no more than the rest of the troops i think we supplied the hospital in orangeburg which was occupied by rebel soldiers wounded and orphans and children who had been brought up from charleston question did you burn any property in orangeburg answer not a bit they burned the property before we crossed the river i was right opposite the river when we carried that bridge i had been down to see mower passing down below the town i passed along with mower's column and arrived just in time to see giles smith's brigade go over i was one of the first to get over into town and the town was burning then i was told by a citizen there that it was burned by some jew question i ask you if you ordered any property to be burned in orangeburg answer i do not believe i did unless it was some cotton and i don't remember that but the town was on fire before i crossed and got into it question you do not remember ordering the cotton of one j w carmalt to be burned answer no sir question you do not remember an interview with carmalt and his asking you to preserve the cotton because it was british property answer i do not question you do not remember telling him that you could afford no more protection to british cotton than answer than that of our own deluded citizens that was my usual answer question your usual answer was that you could afford no protection to cotton belonging to british subjects answer to any subjects more than to our own deluded people question whatever cotton you might find no matter whose it was you believed it to be your duty to burn it answer the rebels left very little cotton for us to burn wheeler who commanded the rebel cavalry retreating before me wrote to general howard a note offering to abstain from the further burning of cotton if i would prevent the burning of houses i wrote to him that i wanted him to burn all the cotton he could because it would save us the trouble of doing it we did not intend to hold the cotton and therefore could leave nothing of value behind us which could be converted into money to be used in aid of the rebellion mr walker objected to anything that mr wheeler told general sherman witness wheeler did not tell me he wrote a letter to general howard who handed it to me mr walker then let us see the letter question i want this to be clearly understood therefore i repeat the question did you not tell all subjects of whatever nation they belonged to that you could not protect their cotton and moreover it was your duty to burn it answer i cannot recall having used that language question well language to that effect answer nor do i recall the fact of any man having applied to me to protect his property by reason of being a foreign subject but if any such did apply to me i certainly would have told him pretty much as you have said i would not undertake to protect his cotton nor anybody else's cotton i did not intend to stay there and protect it i was going on Question if a colonel of one of your regiments while foraging met with a storehouse containing cotton would it or would it not have been his duty to burn it answer yes sir question without receiving specific orders to do so answer yes sir question how far above columbia did you cross the broad and saluda rivers answer i should suppose about three miles question you sent on an advance detachment did you not answer whilst laying a pontoon bridge across broad river we passed over the brigade known as stone's iowa brigade to cover the men whilst engaged in laying down the pontoon bridge question these men under colonel stone first preceded the column answer they remained on the opposite bank deployed of course so as to prevent any of wade hampton's cavalry coming within rifle shot of the place where the pontoon bridge was being laid just about nine o'clock in the morning i was down waiting for the bridge to be finished when i received a note in pencil from colonel stone saying that the mayor had come out and surrendered the city and asking orders i told him to go right in this was about oh, nine or ten in the morning Question. Colonel Stone proceeded to the town? 
answer yes sir they were the first troops that entered the city of columbia question did you offer any terms or promise any protection to the city of columbia or its inhabitants answer never question you did not promise that private property should be protected answer never question did colonel stone answer no sir he had no authority question and you didn't promise at any time that the citizens would be safe in the enjoyment of their private property answer i made no promise it is very probable i may have said that there was no necessity for being frightened that we were not going to burn anything except arsenals machine shops and foundries but it was not in the form of a promise if it was said it was a mere conversational remark probably to the mayor or some of the people who came to me very much alarmed as they naturally would be at the fall of their city question you however entered the city of columbia with the main army about two hours later yes sir question i would like for you to be particular please try and remember how long it was afterwards answer stone's brigade could not have been in town more than an hour or an hour and a half before i came in we came in very quickly the pontoon bridge was nearly done when i got this message from stone and sent back and told him to go right into town question most of the testimony filed in this case states it to be about two hours later upon deliberation would you not think that about the time answer it was a very short time i think we were in there before noon and the day was pretty well advanced before we got the bridge done and stone was to uncover the bridge just before its completion question wouldn't this be about correct if you were to say that the main army entered columbia about twelve o'clock answer near eleven i suppose nearer eleven than twelve o'clock somewhere between eleven and twelve question you were riding at the head of the column answer yes sir question with general howard answer general howard was by my side he was commanding the right wing and i was commanding in chief general howard had his written orders made two days before as to what he was to do after we reached columbia our staffs rode right behind us and then came the head of the column which i think was the second division fifteenth corps commanded by general charles r woods question general howard then i understand you to say had orders from you as to the disposition of troops answer yes sir the left wing didn't come within twelve miles that wing passed broad river at alston from twelve to fifteen miles above columbia the right wing was composed of the fifteenth and seventeenth corps the fifteenth corps was to pass through columbia right on the outskirts of it the seventeenth corps was not to go into columbia at all but to stretch itself across the winsboro road ready to move on to winsboro the leading division of the fifteenth corps commanded by general woods was to occupy columbia and the other two divisions to pass through and encamp just outside the town question these were your orders answer yes sir that division was to furnish the usual provost guard for the city question the seventeenth corps i understand you to say were not to come into columbia they were to stretch across to the winsboro road and the fifteenth corps was to enter columbia answer yes sir question when you entered columbia did you meet any of stone's brigade there answer i found stone's brigade with their arms stacked engaged in trying to put out that burning cotton which was piled in the main street not far from the market-house the pile of cotton being at least three hundred or four hundred feet long and from two to three bales high they were endeavouring to extinguish the flames so far as to enable the train of the fifteenth corps which would have to come right behind to follow that road and to pass through they were trying to make sufficient space around so as to let them pass safely especially the ammunition train which it is a little dangerous to have pass near great fires they were endeavouring to extinguish that fire i found them in the act of so doing when i entered columbia question a great many of stone's troops were disbanded were they not and scattered about answer 
pickets would be over the town posted at intersections of such streets and in such places as colonel stone thought proper for the maintenance of general good order in the town question were not a larger number of them at the time of your entry or shortly afterwards not under orders answer they were scattered through the town you know like soldiers generally when they have stacked arms it is the custom to let a few men go off and get water or something of that kind and they were probably out for such purposes question did you see any stores along main street being broken into answer no sir i did not main street was crowded full of negroes escaped prisoners and officers of our army who had been imprisoned there but who had succeeded in making their escape there must have been three hundred there i met the mayor dr goodwin there an old gentleman i was still mounted and he came up to my horse and we had a conversation about one thing and another and afterwards on a second meeting he told me which house he had selected for my occupation namely the house of blanton duncan on a street at right angles with this main street and removed from it i should suppose about one thousand yards question i understand you to say that you saw no pillaging going on along richardson or main street during the hours of daylight on the seventeenth answer i did not question nor anywhere else in columbia during the hours of daylight answer no sir question you were not apprised of it in any way answer i was not question you were not aware that almost every store along main street was broken into by men in federal uniform answer i was informed by the mayor that wade hampton's cavalry had gone through the town and plundered their stores before we got there the mayor himself reported that to me question i ask you if you are aware that these stores were plundered by men in federal uniform subsequently answer i do not know anything about the federal uniform being used by the rebels question i did not ask about the rebels i asked a very simple question and i want an answer answer i heard nothing of the plundering of stores by our men during the day of our first occupation of the city of columbia question and know nothing of it answer i know nothing of it personally or officially question do you know anything of it in any way whatsoever individually privately or in any way answer no sir on the contrary there was very good order in the city i walked about the streets like everybody else that day and saw nothing out of the way a good many people came to see me and claimed protection and i told them to go back home and behave themselves i came across some of my old friends in columbia and paid them visits question i then understand you to say there was no plundering going on along on main street when your main army passed through answer if there was i saw it not question you have stated to me that there was a general feeling through the army pervading all ranks of a desire to wreak vengeance to extirpate if i may be permitted to use your own words south carolina answer there was end of part four Five of Who Burnt Columbia by Augustine T. Smith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part five. Deposition of General William Tecumseh Sherman. Part two. Question. Was that feeling shared in by your superior officers? Answer. Not at all, unless it may be inferred from a paragraph in a letter of General Halleck to me, which was published, published in the official documents, in which he said, in case I took Charleston, he hoped I would sow salt upon it, so that it would never resurrect. That is the only paragraph I can recall in any letter of instruction or communication to me during the time I was in Savannah or before. Question. What was your reply? 
answer my reply was that if we took charleston i supposed there would be very little left of it when we got through with it but i did not intimate that i was going to charleston because i had made up my mind what course to pursue before that time still my letter is a public letter and is of record it has been printed i suppose i can find it if you desire it counsel i am not particularly anxious to see the letter if you can give me the substance of your reply witness i refer to the testimony given by me before the committee on the conduct of the war in which i extract many of my own letters i think i used the language in a letter to general halleck witness looking over a printed volume i am now trying to see if i can find it my language is quote, i will bear in mind your hint as to charleston and don't think salt will be necessary when i move the fifteenth corps will be on the right of the right wing and their position will bring them naturally into charleston first and if you have watched the history of that corps you will have remarked that they generally do their work up pretty well the truth is the whole army is burning with an insatiable desire to wreak vengeance upon south carolina i almost tremble at her fate but feel that she deserves all that seems in store for her many and many a person in georgia asked me why we did not go to south carolina and when i answered that i was en route for that state the invariable reply was well if you will make those people feel the severities of war we will pardon you for your desolation of georgia i look upon columbia as quite as bad as charleston and i doubt if we shall spare the public buildings there as we did at milledgeville End quote at milledgeville we did not destroy anything except the arsenal let me in this connection refer to general halleck's letter question what is that you are reading from answer this is a volume of extracts from the report of the joint committee on the conduct of the war which i have had bound for my own immediate use witness read from letter of general halleck the following extract quote, orders have been issued for all officers and detachments having three months or more to serve to join your army via savannah those having less than three months to serve will be retained by general thomas should you capture charleston i hope that by some accident the place may be destroyed and if a little salt should be thrown upon its site it may prevent the growth of future crops of nullification and secession End quote general halleck's letter was not in the form of an order it was among the letters it was among the friendly letters which constantly passed between us question it was an official dispatch was it not answer he signed it with his official title question printed is it not answer printed by me question printed among the official dispatches by the committee appointed by congress upon the conduct of the war answer yes sir question you were one of that committee were you not general answer nary time they were after me they did not have anything but congressmen on their committee of course question had nobody but congressmen answer of course not it was a congressional committee it was a joint committee upon the conduct of the war i was a mere witness before them and this is my testimony holding up a printed report question these dispatches were furnished by you answer yes sir by me and a copy of them kept in the war department here question how long had this cotton been burning before you reached columbia answer i cannot tell of course question you say a day and a half answer no i do not i say it was burning when we got there question before you reached the city of columbia i do not mean arrived opposite did you not say that the fire was burning a day and a half before you entered the city answer no sir i say the bridge had been burned and the depot buildings a day or a day and a half before we crossed question had been burned answer yes sir had been burned down and were smouldering we could see it across the river not further than from here the office of the british and american mixed commission near the treasury department to the president's house question do i understand you to say that burning cotton flies in the air answer indeed it does question 
about how many feet high in the air answer as many as six hundred feet yes i saw it fly probably from four or five hundred yards fifteen hundred feet in distance question i do not mean rolling along the ground answer no sir i mean up in the air like a fireball question how about height does it rise above ten feet answer yes sir a hundred and fifty feet whirling round question balls of what size answer probably fifty pounds forty or fifty pounds question how many feet in the air answer one hundred or a hundred and fifty feet in the air question i do not mean when they are flying in the air answer i mean when they are picked up by the force of the wind and drawn down again through the narrow streets as you have seen straws and cotton carried along and then blown away off question was this a narrow street the cotton was blowing in answer no sir question it was in an open street was it not answer no sir it was in the main street i suppose the main street must have been eighty feet wide question were there trees on each side answer yes sir but they were stripped of their leaves they were dry it was in the winter time and the cotton was lodged all through the trees hanging in clusters like snowflakes there were some green trees some of what we call the willow oak that were green but the most of the trees were dry deciduous trees with the leaves stripped off were of a dry kind question columbia is a beautiful city is it not answer yes sir a very beautiful city question there were fine avenues on each side of this cotton answer no sir hardly room to pass on each side when we got in they were hauling the cotton back so as to let the wagons pass when we entered that part of the street question there were fine avenues of trees answer yes sir there were a good many trees question you say the cotton could lodge in the trees when it was flying away answer it did lodge a great deal in the trees question this was on main street answer yes sir on the street which prolonged hits the new state house question richardson or main answer i think it was the main street question that is the one leading to the capitol answer yes sir from the direction from which we were coming i called it the main street counsel that is the main street there is no question about that witness we came right down on what is called richardson street on this map referring to map heretofore introduced in evidence by the claimant it is the main street we came right down where the stores are question leading from the capital up the river answer yes sir i should suppose that burning cotton must have been three or four blocks short of the capital that is before we got to the capital and the drug store was on the right hand corner toward the fire question can you state positively that you saw any house take fire from pieces of burning cotton answer i did myself i saw in the night time between two and four in the night as i came down in the neighbourhood of the fire and walked over to where mr and mrs simmons were living and they came out on the porch we stood there looking at the fire roaring tearing down and i saw dayton and others and probably mccoy of my staff was with me and we were just watching i was in supreme command but i did not exercise direct command because there were plenty of commanding officers on the spot and i thought that too many commanding officers would spoil any game but i saw myself great masses of fire consisting of both cotton and shingles thrown over our heads and one mass of cotton and shingles set fire to a woodshed and there being soldiers close by i had the fire put out it must have been at least three o'clock question how many blocks from the place where the cotton was answer there were two intervening blocks in view when i saw this with my own eyes question how far from the cotton you saw burning at eleven o'clock in the morning answer probably six blocks question in what direction answer about northeast question what time of the night was it that you saw the light of the fire in your room answer the first light just after dark it must have been about seven o'clock in the evening question it broke out near the market did it not answer yes sir question where is the market 
answer after referring to a map made an exhibit by claimants in case of wood and hayworth on assembly street between washington and plain i think the cotton was burned in main street near the corner of plain or washington it may be question you saw this fire at seven o'clock in the evening answer yes sir question you saw the fire at eleven o'clock in the morning answer i had seen cotton burning in the street in the main street and on two or three side streets as i rode into town question how was it this fire surprised you more than the others answer from the brilliant flames cotton in burning makes no flame but i saw from the reflection on my wall that there was a house burning question is not a fire from cotton easily kept under answer it is very easily kept under if you have plenty of force to do it and there is not too much wind prevailing at the time question are you not aware that fire was set to houses in columbia by individuals answer i assure you i am not i did not believe it then and i do not believe it now i have asked the escaped prisoners one of whom is now staying at my house and who was there a prisoner and he tells me he saw with his own eyes carts hauling cotton down in the streets for burning three days before we got in i will give you his name his name is captain s h m byers he is now at my house on his way to zurich switzerland he will leave on saturday objected to by mr walker as not responsive to the question and as being hearsay witness you are pushing me a little beyond the extent of my personal knowledge and supposing you were sincere in your desire for information i referred you to a party who was present at the time and in a position to know the facts question you feel a great interest in the question of the burning of columbia do you not answer i do question far beyond the value of money answer the value of money is nothing compared with the elucidation of the historic truth question you felt as soon as you saw the first signs of a general conflagration in columbia that the authorship of it would be visited upon you answer certainly i knew i would be held responsible for it by everybody question and as a matter of deep personal interest to yourself you are glad to testify to-day answer perfectly so it is my pleasure to testify at any time on that subject or any other especially on this question you have therefore a warm personal interest in this question answer i have question and in vindicating yourself and the united states forces from the charges which have been and which you knew would be brought against you answer if i had made up my mind to burn columbia i would have burnt it with no more feeling than i would a common prairie dog village but i did not do it and i therefore want that truth to be manifest that is the interest i have in it it is not a question of houses of property or anything of the kind question and you feel an interest in vindicating your army from the charge answer yes sir question you told me some time ago that you know in no way of houses being set fire to by individuals in columbia during the night of the seventeenth of february eighteen sixty five answer i saw no soldier engaged in any act of conflagration except this young man who appeared to be drunk and running about suspecting that he was engaged in some mischief question you did see one answer he was behaving badly he was the man whom my aide-de-camp shot and brought to i saw no soldier engaged in any act of incendiarism that night question do you know of any individual firing private property on the night of the seventeenth of february answer i do not he should certainly have been summarily dealt with question do you not believe i do not want what people told you but do you not believe that individuals assisted in spreading that conflagration answer my own judgment was that the fire originated from the imprudent act of wade hampton in ripping open the bales of that cotton piling it on the streets burning it and then going away that god almighty started wind sufficient to carry that cotton wherever he would and in some way or other that burning cotton was the origin of the fire 
after the fire begun i have heard it intimated that some of our soldiers were engaged in spreading it that is the answer to the question my belief is some soldiers after the fire originated may have been concerned in spreading it but not concerned at all in starting it question soldiers may have been concerned in spreading it answer yes sir after it had been started there was a little circumstance which occurred at the beginning while i was still at the pontoon bridge that i will mention right here i received a note from a sister of charity who kept an asylum or school in columbia alleging the fact that she was a teacher in a school in brown county ohio where my daughter minnie was a pupil and by reason of that fact she claimed protection to her school and to her property i think i sent one of my staff officers colonel ewing to assure her that there was no purpose to disturb her or the property of anybody in columbia i have since heard that she claimed that i passed my word guaranteeing to her protection on which she has based a claim for indemnification and so forth now of course i did not want that school burnt with a parcel of little children objected to by mr walker as not brought out by any question asked by him and moreover it is dependent upon statements which the general says he had heard someone else make witness i went myself to see her afterwards that is what i am getting at the next day after the conflagration i went and found them all clustered in an adjoining house and gave orders that they should have possession of some methodist establishment which happened to be vacant and which would serve as a shelter until they could procure another place their schoolhouse was burnt down in the great conflagration of the night before several churches were burnt in the conflagration which of course i could not have desired question do you know of any instances where soldiers or officers under your command saved private property in columbia answer yes sir several of my officers had their eyes burnt in trying to fight off the flames from private property in cases where they were appealed to or had some personal acquaintance question when they were interested they saved property answer yes sir all the forces on earth could not have stopped the fire in that part of the city where the houses were mostly constructed of yellow pine it was a providential subsidence of the wind that enabled us to get the fire under control about four o'clock in the morning if the wind had continued i suppose the fire would have swept everything question in what direction did the wind blow answer i think it was a northwest wind it came right down on our backs i know as we went down the street question northwest answer i think it was if my memory serves me right the wind came down richardson street towards the capital question it was a northerly wind answer i think so question was it nearer north than northwest answer well i really do not know i did not pay much attention it was not my business i am confident that when we rode down the street the wind was at our back and from the northwest it may have shifted in the night but in the morning about three or four o'clock the wind subsided considerably and then the fire was enabled to be girded we had a division of troops on duty the whole of wood's division was ordered in for the purpose of controlling the fire Question did you give any orders for posting sentinels answer no sir that was not my business question do you know anything about it answer no sir question do you know what corps or portions of what corps were posted in the town that night answer the fifteenth corps question posted in town answer yes sir question the whole of the corps answer no sir one division question which division answer woods second division question was woods the first one posted there answer woods division embraced the brigade of stone which was the first question was there not a change in the night answer yes sir the brigade first on duty viz stones was relieved in the daytime question why were they relieved answer because i had seen a drunken man in the streets and called howard's attention to it and told him to go and attend to the matter in person question because you saw one drunken man on the street you had the whole brigade relieved 
answer no sir i did not relieve the brigade i said to general howard there is a drunken man there must be whiskey about somewhere you go and attend to it in person he found more i suppose he can testify about that he reported to me afterwards that he had relieved stone's brigade and brought in a fresh one question what brigade did he bring in then answer i do not know question he brought in a brigade from woods division fifteenth corps answer yes sir question you must have met sentinels in the course of the night at columbia answer yes sir question were they not sentinels acting as a police force answer the sentinels were outside of the district in which i lived there were a great many patrols going about question and acting as a sort of police force answer yes sir we always put the first brigade of a division in a town as a provost guard and they generally took the court house as the headquarters and at once established a police posting a few sentinels three or four for instance at the intersection of streets and so on around the town for the purpose of maintaining general order in the place we called them a provost guard question stone's brigade then acted as the provost guard at columbia until relieved in consequence of your observing the effects of whiskey answer yes sir by general howard who had the general command i had the general supervision my mind was then up with general slocum of course who was at alston then the rest of the woods division was brought into town to fight the fire and i suppose a great many stragglers came into town question there may have been stragglers in the town answer yes sir from the seventeenth corps question but the police force was from woods division of the fifteenth corps and all release of that force were from the fifteenth corps answer yes sir all the troops in columbia were from the fifteenth corps save some stragglers as may have strayed in from other commands question when you reached columbia did you consider it a military necessity to burn it answer no sir question was it a military necessity to destroy private property property outside of arsenals depots etc answer no any property used for hostile purposes ought to have been destroyed and was destroyed no private property ought to have been destroyed except by way of retaliation for the very mean thing they did of bombarding my sleeping soldiers in their camp the night before after it was manifest to wade hampton that he had not force enough to prevent my occupation of columbia some battery was sent down to granby opposite our camp and in the night time when our men were asleep they bombarded all night in consequence of this uncalled-for attack upon us i did at one time think of destroying columbia and publicly avowing this as the cause but on reflection i said to general howard i will let my order stand as it is the order which was in writing was to destroy the arsenals machine shops and everything of that kind but to spare colleges asylums and private property this was the written order but at one time in a moment of resentment when these people unjustifiably and i would almost say cowardly opened a battery of two guns or four guns across upon our camp when we were asleep i was tempted to retaliate if i could have gotten hold of those men i would not have spared them or anything that belonged to them believing it was done by wade hampton's orders question you think the men were bitter about that answer i know they were and i was bitter too and for that very reason question were the officers bitter answer they were bitter too we had no love for the place or the people that occupied it question if you were commanding a small force opposing a large advancing force through your country do you not think it would be justifiable for you to take every step in your power to annoy the advancing force in other words cut off stragglers and attack them in every way you possibly can and run away answer no sir it is proper to do everything you can to stay the progress of a superior army moving upon the country proper to do anything which would produce a good result but anything which provokes which is pure wanton mischief such as murdering instead of capturing stragglers and killing them when in a state of repose is not only bad warfare but very bad policy 
in war you do everything that will produce a good result if wade hampton had resisted me at the crossing of broad river until he could not have held out a moment longer i would have honored him for it but in firing into my camp at the time he did and under the circumstances he did he must have known it was such an act as would exasperate the troops and was perfectly unjustifiable question you do not think it was his duty to attack and kill you wherever he could answer no sir not in a cowardly way he may oppose my heads of columns or pick up stragglers or place obstruction in the way anything to oppose our crossing over into columbia all that would be right and fair in war but to fire across into a sleeping camp with a river intervening with the foreknowledge that it would only kill a few miserable soldiers rolled up in their blankets asleep was inexcusable question was the army animated by any bitter feelings in consequence of it answer yes sir i do not think any one expressed that bitterness of feeling more intensely than i did i expressed it openly question did your men and officers share in these feelings answer they did i regard wade hampton's firing into our camp that night as the basest act i ever heard of i never knew of any instance in civilized warfare and it has been my misfortune to be engaged in a great many struggles i never knew of such a mean act as wade hampton was guilty of in firing upon my camp with no possible object in view and the effect of which he knew would only be to kill a few poor miserable devils rolled up in their blankets and asleep in their camps in the night-time and that firing was kept up all night question you had no knowledge that wade hampton did it you only learned it from general report answer wade hampton was in supreme command beauregard was in the town but had left wade hampton was in the town there i hold him responsible for everything that was done in defence of columbia i admired the action of butler in attacking my column but that was legitimate warfare but what wade hampton did showed an utter absence of military skill instead of firing into my camp of sleeping men by which no possible good could be obtained he should have undertaken to prevent our crossing at the broad and saluda rivers which were left almost entirely undefended fifty men could have held us in check for five days and perhaps longer but we met with no resistance at saluda and comparatively none at broad river i have forgotten the name of the little village where the battery was but it is about three miles below columbia the battery was sent down from columbia in the night time about four miles below we had crossed the little congaree there we had a pretty sharp fight with butler and he did first rate i was near the head of the column at the time myself we got the crossing and everything was clear ahead of us in our march upon columbia after going a little distance i ordered a halt and we laid by and went into camp in the night some time somebody brought a battery down and fired into our camp question you say the army generally all ranks were exasperated by this conduct answer yes sir very justly so question do you think the spirit of vengeance and desire for retaliation of which you have spoken were modified by this act answer on the contrary it was very much increased by it question the desire for retaliation in all ranks was very much increased answer yes sir question did you fear the burning of columbia by your army answer i did question previous to your entry answer yes sir question you thought it more than probable that exasperated by the acts you have stated they would retaliate by burning the city answer i was and wanted to avoid it question you have given us your suppositions in regard to the origin of this fire although you personally may not have ordered the burning of the city would it surprise you if it could be proved to you that your army actually did it answer it would surprise me very much indeed if any officer howard logan woods or any commissioned officer was privy to the setting fire to any house in columbia that night but it would not surprise me if some vagabond did it without orders and merely for deviltry 
it would not surprise me if some of our escaped prisoners or some of our own soldiers aided in spreading the flames i would be perfectly prepared to believe it if the evidence was spread before me that some one or more of our soldiers because in an army of that size we had men capable of doing anything might have assisted in the work of destruction that it was concealed by their fellows but that any of my officers had a hand in it either directly or indirectly i do not and will not believe Question if i were to submit to you now the testimony of some individuals in south carolina whose integrity you have no doubt of that they witnessed the firing by federal soldiers in the presence of officers answer well they would have to state the names of the officers and if the officers denied it i would accept their denial rather than any evidence of people in south carolina if the officers present were mentioned by name or anything by which we could trace them down say the officer of the guard at a certain point then i would believe it i would not upon the mere say-so or even the oath of any person in columbia that night when he would state that he saw a fire kindled in a house or in a shed whereby it spread to the adjoining property i would not believe it unless it were confirmed by some of my own people question you have lived in south carolina have you not answer i was stationed there from eighteen forty one to eighteen forty six question and you know many of the people answer yes sir i know a great many in charleston i was never in columbia until i went on that journey question aside from their political differences with yourself do you not believe them as a race the upper classes i mean to be men of great integrity answer they are men of great honor and integrity they are a very fine set of men question they carry it to an extreme answer they carry it to a nice extreme question their chivalric notions are too extreme for the present age answer yes sir entirely and for common sense too i can give you an illustration of that mr james simmons of charleston a gentleman in all respects is a particular friend of mine it was his brother whose house i had endeavoured to protect that night and to whose family i gave my own house bed and everything that was needed to make comfortable as i was about leaving i got out of our mess stores a tierce of rice and a barrel of hams i divided the stores into two equal parts one part i gave to mrs simmons and the other part to my friend mr walker's namesake i think she is her maiden name being poyas i said to them now you are going to have hard times these came from my own personal stores and i propose leaving them for your use simmons hesitated about receiving them stating that he did not know but what it would be wrong he being a south carolinian to accept a favor from an enemy i said i thought he was a damned fool that i didn't care if he did starve that i didn't give it to him but to his wife and children a man who would raise a point of honor at that time and under such circumstances i thought his ideas of chivalry run a little beyond common sense and yet at the same time mr simmons was an educated and a very polished gentleman and at that very time i think in office in the custom house in charleston he was a very clever gentleman indeed but when he made that point i must confess that i was a little provoked question you think then those south carolinians as a rule are entitled to respect answer to the highest respect question did you see any liquors given to your troops by the confederates answer i did not but i heard that a man in the drug store gave it out in a dipper and i spoke to the mayor about it and asked him if he knew of any liquor in town that i had seen one drunken man in the street he told me there had been some left and he had remonstrated with hampton and beauregard about leaving it in town to fall into our hands they said they could not destroy it because they might be held personally liable for its value afterwards i asked him if he didn't know what an effect liquor has in a town like columbia and he said general i know it very well and i remonstrated with wade hampton and beauregard and they answered they could not destroy this liquor without incurring personal liability it was some liquor at that very drug store i think question can you tell me why these rockets were sent up just prior to the breaking out of the fires 
answer to indicate the head of the column question do you know that answer yes sir i heard afterwards that some rockets had been discovered in some store and that the soldiers fired them off of that i know nothing at all but i supplied the troops with rockets before leaving atlanta and at night the head of the column would indicate its position by sending rockets up question do you not believe that your army during that night was under a state of perfect discipline and could have been controlled answer no sir not in that strict sense you cannot control a body of men when you have got them dispersed to fight a fire question but you could have summoned them answer yes sir i could have ordered the long roll and they would have taken their ranks and then the fire would have gone on when men are dispersed fighting fire there can be no strict discipline question were they dispersed before the breaking out of the fire answer oh yes sir when you disperse an army you lose control of it because you cannot give them orders through and by their captains and lieutenants dispersing an army to fight a fire you at once lose control of it question were not the men dispersed before the fire broke out answer oh yes sir they were dispersed you see you stack arms and post your guards and the moment the guards are posted men may stroll around the street within the sound of the bugle or drum question you allowed the fifteenth corps then to walk the streets of columbia answer i did not allow anything about it i gave no orders about it question your officers permitted it answer they did of course question the fifteenth corps answer that is one division of it you see there were about three divisions in that corps one division of that fifteenth corps was allowed the general privilege of walking the streets when not on duty and when not under arms a large proportion i suppose about one-third that was the usual proportion were stationed all round town with arms in their hands when not armed and guards were all posted then the men could go around town Question i understood you to say that knowing the character of the fifteenth corps knowing its desire to burn columbia you yet suffered your officers answer i do not think i said i knew of any desire on their part to burn columbia i knew they had a deep-seated feeling of hostility to columbia but i do not think i said they had a desire to burn it question you testified a little while ago that it was very likely they might burn columbia and you permitted them or your officers did permitted them to go about the town answer i could have had them stay in the ranks but i would not have done it under the circumstances to save columbia end of part five Six of Who Burnt Columbia by Augustine T. Smith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part six. Deposition of General William Tecumseh Sherman. Part three. Question. Although you knew they were likely to burn Columbia, you would not restrain them to their ranks, even to save it? Answer. No, sir. I would not have done such a harshness to my soldiers to save the whole town they were men and i was not going to treat them like slaves when the guards were posted they were free to come and go according to the rules of their respective brigades question do you consider that the women and children and foreign subjects resident in columbia were responsible for wade hampton's firing into your camp answer of course not question on your line of march from beaufort to columbia was there not a large destruction of private residences answer it was a very poor country poor land and there was very little private property there i saw very little property destroyed question don't you know that there was a large amount destroyed answer no sir i do not know because i was at the head of the column and none was done there the men and negroes behind with the trains as a rule do more mischief than the heads of columns so that individually i know very little of the destruction done in south carolina all i know is that it was a very poor country and there were very mean houses along the line question did you enter winsboro answer i did 
general slocum can bear testimony that the rebels fired that town before we got into it his column entered it first objected to by mr walker i passed into the town and then turned and slept out in the field myself i did not go into the houses question you know nothing then of your own knowledge concerning the destruction of any property in winsboro answer no sir the orders to burn cotton however were still in existence question any soldier setting fire to cotton could be regarded as acting in accordance with the general order answer no soldier could burn cotton of his own volition question if cotton had been destroyed within the vicinity of winsboro by any party under the command of an officer it would have been right under the authority of the united states answer yes sir question do you know anything about camden south carolina answer no sir i did not go there courses division seventeenth corps i think it was that went there question if cotton had been destroyed in camden south carolina would it not have been under the authority of the united states answer yes sir question while on that march i mean answer certainly question if property had been destroyed at chirau would it not answer yes sir we destroyed an arsenal and found a great deal of ammunition that had been sent up there from charleston by the way we lost some men there by the explosion of powder question i understand you then if the united states soldiers under an officer seized or destroyed cotton on the line of this march if the commissioners should decide that it was not an act of war the united states government are responsible for it answer i will assume the responsibility of it and the united states can do what they please about it i am not the united states by a great deal question did you authorize the burning of cotton on the eighteenth of february in columbia answer no sir it was already burnt question no i beg to differ with you on that point answer it was either all burnt or burning there was no necessity for giving any orders i gave no orders for burning cotton down there question if cotton had been found in columbia and they had burnt it they would have done exactly right answer yes sir i would have assumed the responsibility by mr wells question before or at the time you commenced your march inland from beaufort you had given general orders for the burning and destruction of all cotton on your line of march wherever found in public or private buildings answer no such orders were given question what were your orders answer my orders i delegated to corps commanders the orders communicated to the army are dated headquarters military division of the mississippi in the field kingston georgia november nine eighteen sixty four special orders number one twenty that order provides for the organization of the army into two wings right and left paragraphs four five and six of the order cover i suppose all the points of your inquiry and i will just read such and make them a part of my testimony the witness then read as follows quote, four the army will forage liberally in the country during the march to this end each brigade commander will organize a good and sufficient foraging party under the command of one or more discreet officers who will gather near the route travelled corn or forage of any kind meat of any kind vegetables corn meal or whatever is needed by the command aiming at all times to keep in the wagons at least ten days provisions for the command and three days forage soldiers must not enter the dwellings of the inhabitants or commit any trespass but during a halt or a camp they may be permitted to gather turnips potatoes and other vegetables and to drive in stock inside of their camp to regular foraging parties must be entrusted the gathering of provisions and forage at any distance from the road travelled to army corps commanders alone is entrusted the power to destroy mills houses cotton gins etc and for them this general principle is laid down 
in districts and neighborhoods where the army is unmolested no destruction of such property should be permitted but should guerrillas or bushwhackers molest our march or should the inhabitants burn bridges obstruct roads or otherwise manifest local hostility then army commanders should order and enforce a devastation more or less relentless according to the measure of such hostility End quote. Quote six as for horses mules wagons and so forth belonging to the inhabitants the cavalry and artillery may appropriate freely and without limits discriminating however between the rich who are usually hostile and the poor or industrious usually neutral or friendly foraging parties may also take mules or horses to replace the jaded animals of their trains or to serve as pack mules for the regiments or brigades in all foraging of whatever kind the parties engaged will refrain from abusive or threatening language and may where the officer in command thinks proper give written certificates of the facts but no receipts and they will endeavor to leave with each family a reasonable portion for their maintenance End quote. there were no positive orders for the burning of cotton but we regarded it usually as the means which enabled the confederate government to keep up the war therefore we regarded it as a thing to be destroyed and generally speaking it was so destroyed by mr walker question the practical working of the campaign then was the entire destruction of all cotton along the line of march answer we never went out of the way to search for it whenever we encountered it we destroyed it there were a great many exceptions where personal appeals were made to me and other corps commanders and the cotton was spared there was always some good reason for so doing i remember in milledgeville telling general slocum who commanded the place that he might exercise discretion and he did spare the cotton and spared some mills question you are aware i presume of the destruction of cotton as you advanced and you issued no order to restrain answer i left it to the army commanders question to your personal knowledge there was no punishment meted out or orders issued by commanders restraining the destruction of cotton answer no sir question and you considered it a meritorious work on the part of the army and a decidedly advantageous work to the progress of the campaign and to the advancement of the interests of the united states government in the suppression of the rebellion to destroy this cotton answer yes sir i looked upon it as a very obnoxious thing as a thing which had prolonged the war and therefore ought to be destroyed it furnished the enemy with the sinews of war namely money there was a party of englishmen and other foreigners scattered through the country who were buying this cotton and paying for it in bills of exchange on london and other places which could be easily converted into powder and into shot and into arms which were run in by a system of blockade runners that eluded our blockading fleets question at the time of the fall of columbia were not the ports of savannah charleston wilmington in fact all the leading ports of entry in the southern states absolutely sealed to blockade runners answer they were not savannah was but charleston and wilmington were not question were not charleston and wilmington practically sealed answer they were not question in your direct examination you have testified that in your march from beaufort it was your purpose to cut off the railroad at midway and at blackville and that you effectually did so answer we did that effectually question that action severed communication between the interior and charleston answer no sir between augusta and charleston charleston had still other means one going to columbia which passed east of the adisto and the road which branches off and went up by the way of florence there were two roads other than this road that i cut at blackville question you say that you considered it a matter of necessity to destroy the cotton because it destroyed the sinews of war didn't the destruction of this network of railroads in the interior practically prevent the shipment to the sea coast of all this cotton stored in the interior answer no sir they could haul it to the end of the railroad at the point where we let it remain 
question do you not believe that the commissioned officers of the army understood that this destruction of cotton was approved at headquarters and that they acted and may have acted at columbia upon that general understanding answer yes sir they may have acted under that general understanding in columbia question and there were for instance captains with the detachments from their companies lieutenants and other commissioned officers who had been accustomed to the destruction of property who under the general recognition of the right of destruction as a part of the campaign might have acted on the night of the seventeenth under that general feeling and under that answer not inside of columbia because there was a distinct command with the commanding officer designated captains and lieutenants could not have had the command inside of columbia no lawful destruction could have taken place without the approval of the commanding officer of the place general woods a commanding officer of a detachment sent away from the main body who has nobody in his presence or near him superior to himself necessarily acts upon his own authority but if a superior officer is near him he is obliged to have his orders question if a detachment under the command of an officer were to approach a building and the officer in command fire the cotton would it not be presumed that the officer was acting under authority that is if the officer should ride up and in a formal official manner order his men to burn the cotton answer if he is an officer in charge of the party and that is a detachment from the main body yes question i mean inside columbia if an officer had rode up to the storehouse with a detachment of twelve men and said set fire to that cotton it is to be presumed that the officer had authority isn't it answer oh nothing of that kind occurred because the cotton would have had to be rolled out and burned question he might have ordered it rolled out and burned answer yes sir question that is what was done answer he had a right to do that by mr wells question how large a force did you throw into columbia answer i suppose the fifteenth corps then mustered about fifteen thousand men question for what purpose did you throw so large a body of men in there knowing this hostile feeling that existed answer because of the road leading through it the road leading out towards camden when you go through a town you go through and camp the men outside question camden was not in the plan of the campaign for this division answer no sir but you see wade hampton retreated on that road and we followed him he retreated in that direction then again of course the troops on the outside of the town covered it from river to river the seventeenth corps at the northeast and the other at the southeast question how do you account for the fire from that burning cotton in the streets at eleven o'clock in the forenoon remaining smothered and with a high wind blowing as you have testified to for so many hours and not causing any destruction until after nightfall answer the motive we had in extinguishing the fire in that particular pile of cotton was to enable the trains belonging to the fifteenth corps which had to go by that road to pass in comparative safety as soon as the train had passed and gone on to camp the fire was allowed to burn we had no further interest in protecting it question in other words knowing the existence of this high wind and knowing the disastrous effects which would result from a fire you had no interest in protecting this cotton extinguishing the fire in the bales and thus preventing the destruction of the city answer we had no reason to apprehend the large fire that subsequently broke out i said we had no interest in protecting this particular cotton it was pretty well burned down burned down into a smouldering pile i did not give it any personal attention i do not think i looked back i walked through the town a great deal that afternoon but i do not think i went back to that burning district there were so many rowdies down there so many negroes and others hallooing and yelling that i did not care to mingle with them and did not i remember walking about in the suburbs i did not go to that point again question if a detachment of soldiers under commissioned officers such as captains lieutenants and other commissioned officers had been discovered burning cotton in warehouses in columbia on that night would they have been punished 
answer yes sir if a captain or lieutenant had on undertaking the destruction of cotton burnt it inside of a dwelling it would have been considered a very foolish piece of behaviour i can hardly conceive of such a case because cotton is usually rolled out into the street and burned there question but inside of a warehouse answer i suppose there would be no objection to burning cotton inside of one of those large yards but of course not in a shed or inflammable building but the working parties were not engaged then we did our work of destruction in columbia in broad daylight and not at night question hadn't the motive for the destruction of cotton in the progress of the war for the overcoming of the rebellion been in a considerable degree exhausted by the time you had reached columbia answer oh no not by any means it was then on its death struggle question did you know whether there had been any grave doubts on the part of your corps commanders with reference to the impropriety of the continuous destruction of cotton and similar property answer if they entertained any such they never manifested it to me by word or deed counsel for the united states objects to the lines of inquiry because general sherman the commander-in-chief of the army that marched through south carolina was sole judge of what it was proper and right to destroy his officers were bound to obey his orders mr wells desires to have it stated in reply that the witness was not commander-in-chief of the armies the president of the united states being such and that he was subject to the orders of his superior by mr walker question the fifteenth corps were noted for their ability to twist railroad iron were they not answer very well trained in it question after they had undertaken the twisting of railroad iron it was not worth much answer except for old iron it was not fit for railroads any more question did you have any control of all connection between columbia and charleston at the time of your entrance into columbia answer i think the charleston road goes to branchville and then on to orangeburg when we went into columbia we controlled roads leading back from columbia into charleston question all local roads answer not local roads but railroads question you were in command of savannah were you not answer yes sir question you say that when you started from beaufort you did not expect to attack charleston answer no sir i did not question you considered it probable that charleston would be evacuated answer i considered if it was not i would capture the whole garrison but i thought hardy was too smart to allow me to do that question when you reached columbia you were sure charleston was a dead cock in the pit answer yes sir played out as the soldiers used to say question you considered charleston yours answer yes sir testimony as to matters outside of columbia question when you left columbia you placed your army between columbia and wilmington answer yes sir question therefore parties in columbia could not communicate with wilmington answer they could have communicated by courier that is all question what i mean to say is that large transportation wagons could not have traveled between columbia and wilmington answer oh no sir Question. I understand you to say that you considered Wilmington as pretty much in the same box as Charleston. Answer. I considered it would become so as soon as I could cross Cape Fear River at Fayetteville. Question. Had you any doubt about crossing Cape Fear River? Answer. Not a particle. Question. You are confident, as I understand you, that Savannah, Charleston, Beaufort, Georgetown, and Wilmington were in your hands answer would come into my hands before i was done with them i took them in the rear question you say also that at the time you reached columbia you knew that savannah beaufort and charleston were practically in your hands and that communication between columbia and wilmington was cut off by your army intervening it answer savannah and beaufort were in my possession charleston was not nor was wilmington when we entered columbia but I considered the steps I was then taking would certainly result in the capture of both Charleston and Wilmington. Question. Did you not consider when you reached Columbia that Charleston was practically dead? Answer. Yes, sir, so far as any army could make it so. Question. Did you station any garrison along your march? 
answer not one i did not leave a wounded man on the road i took every man right along question is there any other port than those you have enumerated with which columbia could have communicated answer bulls bay and georgetown were open at the mouth of the santees question do you not know that bulls bay is a large open space where your fleet could have gone in at any time unprotected and that no large amount of cotton could have been shipped therefrom answer we could have gone into bulls bay at that time if we had chosen and to georgetown too i suppose we could have taken them if we had seen proper to spend time enough question i am not talking about taking them but you could have sailed in and taken a large number of vessels answer yes sir wilmington i suppose was the most important point for the blockade runners one blockade runner came into savannah after we got possession the fellow woke up and saw our flag and did not know what to make of it question just describe the state of the railroads that you met with in south carolina were there many answer the roads there were well defined the road from charleston to augusta where it comes to branchville branches off to columbia and up to augusta and at another point it branches off question let me limit my question there was one road that passed along the congaree and broad rivers which went up to alston and did not go any further that is only a few miles above columbia i think twelve or eighteen miles to the northwest right up the valley of the broad river the other one is east of the town and goes to charlotte and up to answer we followed that road to gwinsboro in fact we followed it up to a place called chester that is some of my infantry went to chester but i turned the head of my columns to the right and went to rocky mount to that river east i forget the name of it it is about fifty or sixty miles above columbia question did your fifteenth corps twist the rails answer yes sir all the way up to winsboro then i turned off to the right question that road then was pretty well twisted answer yes sir question now take the only other road that i know of at that time from columbia to charleston answer that was on the big road we only destroyed that from orangeburg up to where it crossed the santee i suppose within about twelve or eighteen miles that is between orangeburg and the crossing of the river i think it was the santee one branch of it was the congaree question you know no other road out of columbia answer none excepting those two one to charlotte and one goes up the river to alston i believe question were not those roads practically closed when columbia passed into your hands answer yes sir practically closed when i left columbia redirect by mr worthington question on the seventeenth and eighteenth of february eighteen sixty five who was empowered to order the destruction of cotton or other property in columbia answer first myself and next the commanders of the two wings howard and slocum next the commanders of the four corps then the commanding officer of any detachment sent out from the main body to whom was committed the destruction of any property from the necessity of the case question i meant to limit my question to property in the city of columbia answer first myself then general howard general logan and general charles r woods no one else question if soldiers or subordinate officers without orders from those you have named destroyed property in columbia on the night of the seventeenth february it was unauthorized answer yes sir i do not think it was done except by detachments sent out for the purpose with orders question you have stated that you now feel a personal responsibility in regard to this matter did you feel that personal responsibility on the night of the seventeenth of february when you first saw on the wall of your room the light of the fire answer i did question what effect had it on you then and during the rest of the night answer to do my duty to prevent the extension of that fire so as not to disturb the families of people living in columbia the quiet inhabitants of the place and to prevent the usual clamor where a city was burnt as in pennsylvania w t sherman general 
i james o clefan united states commissioner for the district of columbia do hereby certify that at the request of counsel for the united states i caused the above-mentioned william t sherman deponent in the foregoing deposition to come before me at the time and place in the caption mentioned that said deponent was by me sworn to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth that said deposition was reduced to writing by me and was carefully read to or by deponent before being signed by him and deponent then and there in my presence subscribed the same and i further certify that i have no interest direct or indirect in the claim to which the above deposition relates and am not the agent or attorney of any person having any interest therein witness my hand at the city of washington d c this eleventh day of december eighteen seventy two james o clefane mr walker desires to have it noted that the testimony taken in egypt a printed copy of which has been submitted by the council of the united states in this case was not read on the examination nor referred to in any way for the information of the claimant's attorneys beyond the simple statement that it was filed in a certain case and the handing of a copy to one of the attorneys without his having any opportunity to examine it unless he undertook to do so while the examination was progressing james o clefane united states commissioner end of part six end of who burnt columbia by augustin t smith 